For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That name, the name of the only begotten Son of God is Jesus. It's a name which is above every name. It's God's name. And God was manifest in the flesh, in his Son, Jesus Christ, the man who came into his own people, the Jews, and they killed that man, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ's death was for the sins of the world, for the whole world. And after he died on the cross, they buried him in a sepulcher, but God rose him from the dead on the third day, and he was seen alive by his witnesses after that. And if you believe that gospel and believe on Jesus, his name, you have everlasting life. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So that's what you must do to be saved and to go to heaven and to have your sins forgiven and to be right with God is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus is God, who is manifest in the flesh. He came in his son, Jesus Christ, the man, he came to his own people, the Jews. They did not believe on him. They killed Jesus Christ, that man, the perfect man, and his death was the payment or propitiation for the sins of the whole world. He took, he took the wages of sin, which is death, for all of us, for all the whole world, for every man. And after he died on the cross, he was buried, but God rose him from the dead on the third day. And he was seen by his witnesses after that alive. It was for the forgiveness of sins. For salvation in Romans 1.16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We see Paul preach the gospel here as well throughout the scriptures. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel and ye that fear God, give audience. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Chenu, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they desired a king. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a man of the tri tribe of Benjamin by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. So Jesus Christ was of the seed of David. And God raised him as a Savior, Jesus. His name is Jesus. And Jesus Christ, the man, he came in the Father's name, which is Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. 
So this is the word of salvation, Paul's preaching. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, this is who it was that killed Jesus, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. They fulfilled the scriptures in condemning Jesus to death. And though they found no cause of death in him, because he, Jesus Christ knew no sin, he never sinned. He's a perfect man. He's the only man that never sinned. Uh, so they found no cause of death in him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. So they were envious and they did not believe on him. They, they couldn't even find a cause of death in him, but they still desired Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, it was according to the scriptures, they took him down from the tree. So this is after Jesus died on the cross. They took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. They buried Jesus. But God raised him from the dead. And he was seen many days of them, which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. So Jesus was killed by his own people. They that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, the Jews, they killed the Lord Jesus, the man Jesus Christ. They, they took him down from the tree. They buried him in a sepulcher. God rose him from the dead on the third day, and he was seen by his witnesses alive. And we declare unto you glad tidings, so that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same, the same promise, unto us their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again. God rose Jesus from the dead, Jesus Christ. And it is also written, as it is also written in the second Psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another Psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again, as Jesus Christ, saw no corruption. Be it known unto you therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. This is how your sins can be forgiven if you believe this gospel with your heart, if you believe the gospel of Christ, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's through him that we're forgiven of our sins, because he died for our sins. Be it known to you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe. And that's what we must do, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So if you believe this gospel, that Jesus is God, he was manifest in the flesh, he came to his own people, his own people killed Jesus Christ, the man, and then his death, Jesus Christ's death was for the sins of the world. They buried him, but God rose him from the dead, and he was seen by his witnesses alive, and it was done for the forgiveness of your sins. For the forgiveness of sins. If you believe that gospel with your heart, you are justified from all things. You're forgiven from, for all of your sins forever. You'll go to heaven. You'll be right with God. Not based on your own goodness. Not based on your works. But because you've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what God says in his word. You must do to be saved. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things, from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So that's the gospel, the gospel of peace. We must keep in memory, but we must believe it to be saved. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, that's Jesus Christ, 
and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, God rose him from the dead, and that he was seen, he was seen by his witnesses, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. So here we see Jesus. Uh, Jesus died. Jesus, Jesus Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried. God rose him from the dead on the third day, and he was seen by his witnesses alive after that. And it was it's by grace, not of works. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so he believed. And what, again, what we must do to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, believe the gospel of Christ. Anyway, what's going on, Kundert? Hello, brother Michael. How are you doing? Good, brother. How are you doing? Doing good. Good, good. Yes, sir. What's going on? Um, <clears throat> been working a little bit. Went to the city, grabbed my bike. I don't want to have my bike in the city. So, I saw a video like a few weeks ago about uh, how many bikes are in the Netherlands mm. compared to maybe a lot of other countries. It's like a big, big network of bike trails, and they've redesigned like over the decades all the a lot of the streets to be accessible for bikes. And bikes are a huge, huge part of many, many, many people's commutes, even long commutes. That's right. Yeah, the Netherlands is flat, so everyone bikes everywhere basically especially in the city if you live in a city you go by bike uh, if you go to high school you you bike to school um under like well anything really beneath or under like six miles you just bike to school and a primary school as well just everything is by bike they have special bike lanes um almost everywhere except on the highway but yeah that's that's the netherlands that's awesome bikes yeah. everywhere they have like an actual video of it so they would show like the parking system where they're like bikes stored on top of bikes on, like it's just a big and then all the yeah. trails <laughs> and then the streets themselves how they're like over here you see like a bike lane sometimes where it's just a little bit of a paved you know mm -hmm. dotted line or something like a side but same kind of road you'd share with the cars but over there it's like the videos I was seeing of the streets were like, it's like this, you know, red paved kind of like special, like and so many people on bikes. It's really cool to see. It's crazy. Yep. Like if you go to Amsterdam or one of the cities, I don't know how it functions, but it works. And yeah, that's just, that's the culture. It's good exercise too, eh? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Fresh air. Yeah. What are we talking about? Oh, well, it's preaching the gospel. Oh, I see. Yeah, my report of the gospel that you got on the screen right there. First part, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. So how did he die? Well, he died on the cross for the sins of the world. And he was condemned of his own. That's, that's how he was crucified. His own people said, let his blood be upon us and our children. And Jesus uh, died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried in a sepulcher. But God rose him on the third day. And he was seen alive by many witnesses, over 500 at once. That's the gospel, I believe. Um, and Jesus is the name above all names. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name 
under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved so jesus is given to the canadians as well as to the people in the united states as well as to the spanish to the chinese to the dutch jesus is the name that's the name that is mighty throughout all the earth and that's the name whereby you must be saved so believe in it that's the name of the son of god that's the name of the father that's the name of the holy ghost so I pray you believe in jesus and not in your own works amen kill in the building amen amen come on gentlemen that's going there brother kill um, get that gospel in one time i believe on the same jesus my brethren preached jesus is the name above every name there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and that's jesus at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is lord to the glory of god the father so jesus is the name it's not yeshua it's not yahweh it's not yehoshua it's none other name it's jesus it's not an interpretation it's not how how we say it in our language or in our nation or this is how we we came we gave him a nickname no uh -uh. it's not it's not of no, uh, none other name and so jesus is god that was manifest in the flesh the man christ jesus has the same name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and so the man christ jesus he came unto his own and his own received him not they condemned him to the cross the jews condemned him to the cross and uh, he was sinless sinless man but he who knew no sin became sin for us so that he could pay for our sins of the world with his shed blood and he died on a cross for the sins of the world he was buried in a sepulcher for three days and three nights but on the third day, he was quickened by the spirit. God rose him from the dead and he was seen risen. He was seen alive by his witnesses. And if you believe on that gospel and that Jesus, you can have eternal life and be with the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> So what are we discussing today? Oh, I just started to uh, just preach the gospel. Couldn't join, preach the gospel, and then you did. So I haven't, uh, I haven't looked into any topics uh, other than that just yet. If oh. anybody's watching, listening, and you want to join the study, just click the link to join. If you have any questions, uh, we can look at them in scriptures for you there. Well, maybe, Michael, we can get your take on it because you're usually good with the scriptures. Scriptural support for how we should approach people, how we should be fishers of men um, for, for the purpose of preaching the gospel. Are we to use enticing words, deception, um, or what, what is our approach? Do we do a straight way? Do we... You know, yeah, the scripture says straight away they, yeah. they, left, they left their nets and followed him. And it says, not with enticing words. First um, Corinthians 2 4. Uh, we, we follow Paul as well, uh, be followers of Paul, God says. Um, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Um, that's a good point, too. I think, like, doctrines, believe, an unbeliever is not going to understand the doctrine. You know, if you're, they need to hear the gospel first, firstly and believe that unto salvation. 
and then God will give them understanding. Um, so to, you know, to keep on topic, I would think. Uh, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching, so I'd follow Paul, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but a demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So not with enticing words of man's wisdom. And I would say to the point of the gospel and not, uh, you know, doctrine that's for the believers, not with excellency of speech or of, of wisdom. Uh, straightway, they left their nets. So straightway is definitely there. And that's regarding uh, being, a, I was in the same um, scripture as uh, fishers of men. In uh, Matthew 4, it says, <clears throat> And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets, and they followed and followed him. So straightway, yeah. Um, and in Mark as well, and Jesus said unto them, come, af come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots, I guess, lots of to look at in that topic. But I would just say, to, you know, generally to follow Paul, because we're to follow Paul. And, you know, Jesus sent Paul with the gospel. So I'd look at the different, look at uh, God's instructions to the church through Paul's writings. And also, how did Paul preach to follow Paul? Amen. Amen. I agree. Uh, boldly, it says to preach boldly. Uh, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So don't be ashamed of it. Preach boldly. Uh, it's part of the whole armor of God. So, you know, we we need to do it in order to uh, stand in order to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So that's maybe not so much a how how to go about it, but just uh, you know how important it is. You know, to, to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, or if we need to put on the whole armor of God. And part of that whole armor of God is having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So that's um, super important. Um, and Paul, like I think a lot of times he would keep it moving. You know, if if people were not believing, if they were you know, ridiculing or um, blaspheming, he would, uh, and Paul left a lot of places. And the, those who heard and believed would be added unto the church, but he wouldn't, uh, it seems to me, and we can look at examples in scriptures, that it seemed to me like he would preach somewhere, like at Mars Hill, say, or uh, different places. And he would preach, he would say what he had to say, and some would believe and, and some would not. Uh, and he would, you know, leave for the next people. You know, I don't see him going back and forth with a lot of people about a lot of things. He wasn't a, a negotiator or a salesman or nothing like that, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. He was a preacher, just preached. Yeah. Did his job in and out. Let God do the work. Yeah. Amen. So the servant of the Lord must not strive as well. So I didn't see him striving with anybody when he preached the gospel. So here's uh, just when he's preaching at uh, Mars Hill. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. And this is after he spoke to them. And I don't see him entertaining any of their questions or going back and forth with a lot of dialogue with them or anything. But uh, afterwards, so uh, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. And I think there's other spots too where he, you know, he departed after he said what he had to say. And some would believe and be added into the church and some would mock and then he would depart and go to the next place. I've been thinking about, um, cause I've been listening to scripture. Um, and you know, in these studies, I don't know why, maybe it's because we're doing them online, 
but a lot of the times people are now over talking us you know and and just interjecting and answering the matter before they hear it that's in scripture i know that but um it, it looks like in scripture it was usually more like they they would actually let jesus you know finish talking and then they would reply or when jesus asked them a question they they would say we, we don't know the answer um in that specific instance um when jesus was asking about the the resurrection or the baptism of john whence was it um and of course they lied but now it, it's like so so much worse you know that they're over talking and blaspheming and saying god can die i wonder why that is or am i seeing that wrong or no yeah that's, that's a good point maybe because we're trying to bait them on our own you know see god is the one that's going to send the preacher so that's why i like that mars hills one because it just shows that these are people that are seeking an unknown god but they they asked paul to stand up and preach and they wanted to hear what he might say so they chose to listen paul didn't entice him he didn't you know, he didn't deceive him. He was flatly, boldly. I mean, that to me, that that's the, I don't, I mean, that to me is one of his greatest preaching. I mean, obviously Acts 13 is the best because it's the, the full gospel. But this is him preaching to uh, not, not, you know, Israel. And he's, and he's not even really hidden all of the gospel you know, I mean, you know, he's not most of the time he's preaching, uh, preaching to them. And, you know, like he says to, to the Jews, I became as a Jew. And he's, he's given us an example of how we talk to all kind of people. And then he hit the gospel at the end. And that's when they stopped wanting to hear him. But they asked him to come up. I, I learned so much from this one. This is one of my favorite preachings of Paul. Obviously, Acts 13 first, and this would probably be second, you know. But but to me, we're 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 i think we're fishing the wrong way that's why people are over talking so they don't want to hear it we're trying to force it just like the pharisees if jesus were the reason why you don't see that because if jesus were to try to preach to the pharisees they did interrupt him a lot of times and they were trying to kill him and stone him and so he would disappear and get away from them but he wasn't trying to preach to them he wasn't even trying to argue if we're trying to preach to the wrong people the pharisees which we really talk to a lot of basically pharisees religious folks that think they got it right and don't want to hear it then then they're going to over talk us they're not going to hear what we have to say and we're not doing our job anyway so i would rather not preach to a pharisee i'd rather preach to a sinner that's looking seeking to be saved amen those are good points for sure um, and they got Mars Hill, like they did invite him or ask him to speak, right? Um, and they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. So they wanted to know. They were asking him. Um, I see some other parts too where like he would go into places like he would go into i don't know if it's because he was a jew he would go and you know to win the jews he would you know be as a jew paul was a jew um and paul as his manner was this or uh, now when they had passed through amphipolis and Apoll apollonia they came to thessalonica where was a synagogue of the jews and paul has as his manner was went in unto them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed, uh, and some believe not moved with envy. Um, so it, I think it's a great point that here he was invited to speak and they were, they were asking him, you know, for to speak and in Acts 13 as well. You know, does any of you have any words of ex exhortation? And then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hand. 
And then, but here, like maybe I'm not sure if this is, if I'm right on this, but is there some parts where, is there some places where Paul was not openly invited to stand up and speak or was he, did he like here, did he go into the synagogue and reason with them over a number of days? That's a good question. Um, Certainly here he, uh, he was invited or asked, you know, to speak in, in Acts 13 as well. So it'd be good to, I think, like, that would be the right track for my, me. I, I mean, that's what I would think to do, I mean, is to to search what did Paul do in those different cases, or how was he invited, or how did he preach? And also in Acts 16, you, you got this guy who is suicidal, right? And he's, like, at the low point of his life. Yeah. Like, sometimes, like, when, when I read the Scripture... It, it, it's almost like with no emotion, you know, it's like, yeah, this, this guy, I'm just reading who was about to, um, who would have killed himself. But that's not how the situation really was, right? You know, he, he had a sword, you know, <laughs> he was emotional, he was scared in that very moment. And w when you're reading, or at least when I'm reading, it's not always like I realized that at that moment, but this guy was at the low point, he was scared. And then he's asking and searching and he and then it says and brought them out and said sirs what must i do to be saved so this guy was searching at that moment when he was suicidal right so <clears throat> that i think that's also a um a good place to fish for those people that are in that same situation Actually, I think we've accidentally put too much emphasis on fishing. Jesus said, I'll, I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say go out there and fish. We just need to be ready. Mm. That's true. He said be ready to always. Shop, I right? look, yeah, I want to look at that because I, I don't think it's our job to fish. It's our job to just go. Preach to whoever. Whosoever, yeah. So, yeah, like Paul happened. Well, yeah, I guess did Paul head out to different places to preach the gospel? Like, did he go from one city, one city to another, or he would he would go somewhere to preach the gospel? Yeah, that's true. He would just travel and go. He would just go to preach. He didn't have his own. A little area say, oh, this is where I normally go to. No, he'll preach in the city, then leave there, go preach at another city. <laughs> That's it. Preached in the synagogues, too. Um, this is not Paul here, but Paul pre it was interesting. I thought it was interesting that. Paul would go into the synagogue and preach, even though he was not, you know, under the law of the Jews anymore. He was not a follower of that. He still said he was a Jew, like in a Roman, but like he would go into the synagogue even, at the, even after he was, you know, uh, a believer in Jesus. And he would reason with the Jews, for, uh, you know, say multiple days. And straightway, and Paul straightway, straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. So he'd actually go inside the, in into the synagogues to preach, even after he was straightway, no enticing yeah. words, no deception, a straightway preaching, and they would kick him out. Yeah. You go 2023. 20, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying away was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. See what I'm saying? Uh, me, when I read that, I take that seriously. I mean, what did he say that he that these people wanted to kill him? 
they were upset. It was no happy. He wasn't all being diplomatic and making them feel good. They wanted to kill him. I take that seriously. But we're supposed to be like Paul. Why aren't we taught preaching that same way? I don't know. We all want to make friends and be happy. I I just don't see it that way in scripture. No, I don't either. This song reminds me or like comes to mind for do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of God. So we're definitely not here to please men, um, but to please God. They put Peter and them in prison for preaching Jesus. I mean, we're soldiers, man. This is a war. I mean, I think we just got to get our mind set right. Transform your mind. Yeah, Transform your really mind. Good. In Romans uh, 12, 10, uh, 1 and 2, uh, line 2 here, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's another scripture that says, uh, Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. I think it says, Be not unwise. Yeah, in Ephesians 5, 17, wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And then in Romans uh, 12, 2 here, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you definitely want to know what, what does God want us to do. And then all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So it's good to seek these things for sure, because you want to do it the right, the best you can, or the you know you want to please God and, and live according to His commandments, right, for the church. So this good study. They they want they hated Jesus. They want to kill him. I don't know. If we're having if we're friends with the enemy. I don't think that's God's will. No. Nope. If any be a friend of the world, um, James 4, I'm not sure if this is referring to the unbelievers or not. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. But this might be referring to something else than than that but um but yeah it's good good to search these things for sure um I wish it was something so yeah formal, I, I, I guess I don't it's, think it's, it's like we're doing it in a mean way we can still be meek but it's what we say just like just like um Stephen. Now that was just that was strong preaching to the deaf. And even when they stoned him, he said, Lay this not lay this sin not to their charge. Yeah. That was very meek and humble. But what he said was straight to the point, seven went to the chase, calling them out, wasn't nice. And but I, I I'm you know assuming based off of the text that he didn't say it in a mean way. It's not how he said it, it's what he said. We need to stick to what, to say the, the right way. Just say the right words. We don't have to be mean to people. The words itself are, are cutting them to the to the heart. They were cut to the heart yep. with the words that he spoke. Hebrews, right? 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. He said, um, what makes manifest is light. Whatsoever doth make manifest 
Ephesians 5.13, um, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So, you know, the, the word of God is, is light for sure. Making it manifest, making manifest the uh, pricking people's hearts, yeah. Um, and people, you know, some people are like, just like the parable of the sower, right? In Luke 8. Where it's and uh, you know God's word to us in the church about um, how uh, you know Paul watered or Paul planted, Paul's watered, but God gives the increase. Therefore, you know he that watereth is nothing; he that planteth is nothing. But God they give the increase. That's a good question. What is watering in Scripture? How do we water? We know how we plant. I mean, that's planting a seed, preaching the the word of God. But how do you water it? Is that with our? Are we watering it with our report? Hmm. Apollos watered. Or you could also water because the word is water. So you with more, yeah. more word. So I someone think else gives be- a word. You give a word, so that's the planning. So someone, puts, okay, so who got there first is the one that planted, and the person that came back with some more word to support is watering that word, probably. I would think so, yeah. Maybe so that's what it is. Okay, people would plant before they water. Yeah, I think that's right. And they're but they're one as well. Now that he that he that now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Amen. That's to do with the word of God, yeah. And then it says, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Um, but the next line, it says that he might present it to himself, uh, or washing of water by the word. Yep. Yep. In Ephesians 5. Uh, this the, li- the living water. Yeah, the living water, amen. <laughs> Did they ever go preaching alone? Good question. I don't know. That's a good no, question. I think they were said company. Well, at, at Mars Hill, he was alone, I think. Right? No, or did no. he have someone with him? Yeah. I, don't know. I believe it was right after Barnabas left. Yeah. It was yeah. with Silas. Yeah. Oh, it was with Silas. Yeah. I think they've always done by twos, I think. Yeah, you're right. Good point. And when somebody would leave him, he would ask for somebody else to come, didn't he? Like when uh, I think it was. Yeah. Some a couple of brethren had left him, and then he asked, "Can you send Luke and I send Mark?" Uh huh. Profitable meet, profitable to me for the ministry. But uh, the guy that got killed wasn't he preaching the law? No. Uh, Stephen. Stephen. Yeah. Stephen. Let's see. Uh, I know I know we're not supposed six. to follow Stephen, but I'm just trying to find an example. And the Ethiopian eunuch, he preached alone. He left, you know, because the angel told him, "Hey, go," and he ran. So he he preached alone. Philip. So maybe that was something that Paul started, you know. And now we're supposed to follow Paul, but before that, it looks like there were a couple examples of people preaching alone. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about these what you just or what you two just looked at like this sewing and the uh, watering like, yeah so it, it's like almost people. backing up with what someone else is saying yes the, the witness the thing. where there are two or three witnesses there i am in the midst of them so yeah Man. that's yeah. probably yeah. just yeah. Yeah. Way to like mm. uh, two by two as well i know that was i uh, wasn't you know Paul Paul's ministry, but uh, when Jesus sent his disciples out, he sent them out two by two. Mm. Okay. You know, so the three four three fold cord is uh, not easily broken. I think says. So hmm. That was a good point. Is it two. The reward of two is better. I got, I got to stop misquoting these. I got to look them up. Uh, Ecclesiastes four nine two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. And if one prevail against him, two will withstand him. And a three, four cold is not quickly broken. Mm. 
two are better than one. Oh, <laughs> you just had it on the screen. I, I thought of it, and then it's on the screen. It's one mind, brother. One mind. So two are better than one. I like it. I like it. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Yeah, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two will withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Mm. So that'd be a good thing to look at, I think, too, is, you know, to... Paul was all Paul always preaching with other people. Um, what about when he was in his own hired house that people would come to him? But was he doing that alone? He was testifying, but that wasn't preaching to the lost, he was testifying to the believer, I believe. Received all that came unto him, yeah, but. I think that wasn't preaching the gospel. I think he he was testifying of God. I think preaching the kingdom of God. Yeah, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, mm -hmm. so he was teaching and preaching to believers. I believe. Also, like if he couldn't help it too, if he was kept there in you know, prison, yeah. <laughs> But even in prison, Paul and Silas <laughs> are preaching mm -hmm. to the Philippian jailer. Yeah, I was just thinking that in Acts 16, yeah. Mm. So it's like pray, pray for those who persecute you, you know, do good to them that uh, uh, do good to them that persecute you, right? Uh, yeah, pray for them that persecute you. Oh, wrongfully uh harm you or something do like good that. to them that hate you like hate you. was a, pri a prison guard you know yep. was, but paul is saying don't do yourself any harm do yourself no harm and mm. the hospital. good points well in our group studies we we definitely have more than two so maybe are you saying that we should limit it to just two people preach to that person I think in times past, there's been when there's been a lot of people on a call, and then like a lot of people, the brethren are trying to all speak at once, and it's less orderly. And then there's um, it didn't go as I can't say it didn't go as well. Like if you know what, God's God give the increase, but I just found that if a couple people were talking, it would seem more orderly that than if a whole bunch of people were trying to. Yeah, because they they feel ganged upon. Yeah kind of thing mm. that's a good point so mm. unless called upon but yeah maybe two people should yeah maybe two people should kind of address it some deep so paul, stuff paul and silas two people here but again, he was in prison. Um, like when he went to Martyrs Hill. And you got Paul and uh, Barnabas. Yeah. And then they split up. Oh, in 15 days split up. Uh, this one here, he still had Luke with them. Only Luke is with me. This was after Demas, for Demas, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Thessalonica Christian, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable for me for the ministry. And Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus. So he had Luke with him, and then... I think he was asking Timothy to come bring Mark with him as well. So like it seemed he went with others. He's profitable to him. <laughs> In Acts 15, it says Paul chose Silas, 
you know, because there was a contention between Paul and Silas. All right, Car. And and Barnabas took Mark. Oh, or man. actually John, whose surname was Mark. So John Mark. So that's just two pairs. Jesus sent his disciples out also two by two. Good point, yeah, that's right. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas. Barnabas and Paul. Judas and Silas. Isn't there a part where um, I'm just going to look it up the, about the uh, where they were waiting tables or something like that? And then they're saying, you know, who's for the women, right? They were waiting tables. They're saying, like, shouldn't we do the other work of the ministry and then we can have other people do the waiting on the tables? Um, waiting on tables, was it? And I thought it was something about he taught, he sent them two at a time at that time. Um, be there a lot. This one here, Act 6, serving tables, that is. Um, and in those days, the number of the disciples was multiplied. There arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So I guess that's about serving tables there. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess I was not remembering correctly about the two sent by two. It was just, I think they were, I knew there was, an, I thought there was a number there. So like the seven, but that was um, getting those seven to serve the tables while well, they themselves uh, to the ministry of the word. Yeah. And that's why they chose Stephen too. Yeah. See two, and the word search on two. So Philip, Philip might have went by himself. I don't know if Philip went with anyone, but that, that was before, like, much of Paul in Scripture there. It says, um, 2 Corinthians 13, 1, This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Yeah, two so, or three witnesses, yeah. Maybe if, if you're preaching one-on-one, -on -one, um, are, are the words then being established? Um, I think the witness also we have in ourselves. And remember when Jesus came, they asked, they said the same thing to him about uh, two witnesses, and he said, the Father's, the Father's with me also. And we have, you know, the Father as well. I'll just look that up so I'm not just quoting, misquoting stuff here. Um, uh, so I am not alone. Um, John, it's John 8 or 16. John 8, I think. 
uh, here it says, uh, the Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. So that's two witnesses right there. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye, ye know, neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. But I think that we have the witness in ourselves as well. It says in First John, I think, as well, or one of the books of John there. Uh, we have the witness in us. In Acts 19, 22, Paul says, So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. So Paul was sending two. Amen. Just like yeah, Jesus sent two also. Um, yeah, we have the witness in us. And first John five ten, he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. So like how Jesus, they said his record was not true; it's just one man speaking. But he said, no, it's I have the Father also. So we we do too. But um, yeah, that's a great one that we're just you were just in there. Was it Acts uh, nineteen twenty two yeah, twenty two? So Paul sent two. After these things were ended, Paul promised, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also go to Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto them, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. Yeah. In Acts 9 as well. Um, this was um, the disciples sent to then. And for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. So the disciples sent two men to Peter. I don't think no. they were going to preach the gospel to him, though. Um, so that might be a bit different. But, yeah, the other ones, for sure, when Paul sent to, um, Jesus and his ministry sent, sent to. I think it's important to remember the precept, right? Two are better than one. Yeah. So that's a precept. And then. You see two a lot in the scripture. You got two angels at the sepulchre. Yeah. In Acts 1, it also said when Jesus ascended up, and while they stood steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So this oh, two seems to be Oh, yeah. The orderly thing. Jesus sent two disciples. Paul sent two. God sent two angels to, to uh, was it Sodom or Gomorrah? Um, also, two, two cherubim a lot of times. Um, yeah, two angels in white. Um, yeah, in Genesis oh. 19, 1. It says, uh, and there came two angels to Sodom that even. 
So God, God sent two angels. John 8, 17. Did you look at that one? I, I remember you pulling up John 8, but John 8 17. 17. Yeah. Oh, Jesus yeah. said, it is writ also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Yeah. So this way they were saying that he was not true because he was just one man speaking about himself, you know, bearing record of himself. But they didn't, you know, know that the father was also with them bearing witness. And then also like in 1 John 5, it says uh, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. So that's three bearing record. And then in the next line, uh, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. It also says we're one. Mm. Uh, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. So there's another three bearing witness in earth. I remember doing uh, some clubhouse preaching, and, and this was one of the verses they pulled up, showing that God is a man, because it says that the testimony of two men is true. Yeah, that's false. Say so, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's interesting too. That uh, three bear record in heaven and three bear witness in earth, and uh, where it's this um, three four cold. What does it actually mean? I never understood that line eight and these three agree in one. I would just think it like if if you know people agree or to be if two. Well, it's not people, I guess, but uh, the uh, the the spirit and the water and the blood. So that's three, right? The spirit is in the water and the blood. That's three different, or three. Spirit is one, the water is one, the blood is one. So that's three, and they agree in one. So I would think that they agree. In one, um, I would search in one. I think he said, "Let them be one as we are one." Some other scriptures might say, "In one," those words. Mm. Hold on, Daniel, brother Daniel. Good morning, brothers. How's how's it going there in Hawaii? Going good, brother. I woke up early this morning. I'll be right back. I'm eating dinner real quick. What's up, Daniel? Stop, brother. Got speed, bro. What you cooking? <laughs> Something nice. All right. Cool. Hey, good morning, brother Kel. Well, there we go. The the house the the house is getting fit, fuller and fuller. Yeah, everybody making their way, man. Everybody caught the right bus. <laughs> Slowly but surely. It only took you an hour, but you're yeah. here. <laughs> I just woke up too, not too long ago. I go freshen up. I look, hey, that guy. And I you use the bathroom. I'm like, hey, they study it, man. I like when, I like when Michael do these early ones, though. I know, yeah. Michael, keep it going, boy. I like it. So, yeah, we, we, uh, we, Caius is at his game, and then Car got one in a, uh, another hour. So we just had a little window to come in and jump in and, and be blessed. <laughs> Nice. I'll take. A, I'll look into the game. What do you guys play? Baseball. Yeah, Caius is playing baseball. They they made the World Series yesterday with the win they got. So they're one of the top four teams that's going to go into the World Series next week. Which, All right. Yeah, nice. Congrats. I go to watch. Yeah, but they're trying to win this tournament, so they got to win two games today, and then they're going to the championship tomorrow. Oh. It's going to be tough. <laughs> oh, gonna be on TV at an ESPN. No, no, that that's the World Series for Little League. This is World Series for Pony, and they don't Pony. televise this one. Yeah, but we, they'll be on the on on the live stream. You know, that's why I live stream my boys. Get them next. I suppose the game, yeah. the game that they played yesterday, got uh, almost two hundred views on it. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. I'll look into it today. Yeah, and then Kari's got 
two games today, they could win the basketball tournament championship. You know, these tournaments are usually about four or five games a weekend. Yeah. Um, they play some tough teams. And then we go to Vegas okay. in a couple of weeks for another tournament. So these boys are busy, man, trying to be champions. Right. They're going to be champs. Kings and priests, you know. You know, so they already got the victory in the Lord. Amen to that. They're special people, man. Amen. Oh, before we go, Kari, what's that gospel one time? Kari, on, one time. Yeah. Bless them with that gospel. Jesus came out to, came out to his own. His own received him, not the Jews. That he killed them. They killed Jesus on the cross, and he was buried for three days. He was seen over his witnesses, and he died for us. Amen. But he's alive. Yeah, he's alive now. That's right. Who is Jesus? He's God. That's right. Amen. All right. You're going you're gonna to go and show out today? Yeah. You're going to work hard, and I just want you to strive for excellence, man. That's it. Yes, sir. All right. Let's do it. All right, Carl, we're going to be rooting for you. Godspeed, Godspeed brother. Guys. Godspeed. Godspeed to Caius, too. Godspeed, oh, Caius. Thanks. Oh, happy anniversary. Darren. Oh, Thank you. That was yesterday. <laughs> oh, happy yesterday. anniversary, PT. Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit late, you know, but hey, better okay. late than never. Be late at the anniversary. Yeah. It's a blessing, man, definitely. Time is flying. Amen. Yeah, who's so fine with the wife finds a good thing. Obtain the favor of the Lord. Sir. Yeah, we actually been together uh, maybe 12 years, almost. It'd be uh, going on 12 years this year. Oh, and, uh, wow. Been married six, so. Oh, well, our 12-year anniversary is in October. So, oh, y'all, wow. yeah, as long as we've been married, as long as y'all known each other. <laughs> yep, yep. I think it was like October, November, 2010, when uh, mm. when we started dating. I, I told her, I told her then, yeah, you're gonna be my wife. She kind of looked at me crazy. And I'm just like, I know you are. I just that was 12 yep. years ago. So you just know it. Yeah, you just know it. That's awesome. Yeah. Right on. Mm -hmm. I shared my report of the gospel too. That's why I came on. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I believe the gospel. Uh, that's the most important thing someone must do before we leave this earth. So believe on Jesus. Uh, he's God manifest in the flesh. He went to his own people, the Jews. They rejected him. Even though he was sinless, he went to the cross. He died for the sins of the world. He was buried. But on the third day, God raised him from the grave. And he was seen risen. So rejoice evermore. That's the gospel that I believe to go to heaven. Um, I'll give you a scripture. I'll give you John 1, 12. It says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So that's the name above all names, Jesus. Believe on him. Amen. 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 Even, to, even to them that believe on his name. Yeah, singular. Yeah, one name. Yeah. Yeah, that... that I'm telling you that always nine times nine nine times out of a hundred that's gonna be the stumbling block that people fall on there. The really, yeah, yeah. The, who Jesus is. Uh, so it's usually the the name, or I, I, I would say identity of just who he is, who Jesus is. Is is he God, or is he man, or is he the Holy One? You know, because the man is not. God. So yeah, that's it. Jesus is the stumbling block, man. Amen. I noticed uh, you know how people give certain beliefs like these titles, like Mormonism, you know what I'm saying, and whatever else you got out there. So they they make oneness. I don't need they I don't know who started that, but like when they hear us described, they'll start to call us oneness. I'm like, where do y'all even get that from? Well, because, all right, so the thinking, see, these guys, when you learn a, a doctrine of man, then you learn what's the opposing doctrine, right? So, for instance, Calvinism, their opposing doctrine, which makes 
Calvinists more convinced in is they say, well, Arminianists, Arminians believe this, which is like the total opposite. So to make them believe their doctrine even more, they're, they point on how wrong the other one is. See, so you got to, so to believe a lie, you got to have an opposing, you know, a uh, view or, you know, uh, a villain. And so the opposing view or the villain to uh, Trinitarians is modalism. And so they, they're they just saying, oh, you're the opposite. So that's what it is. That's where it's coming from. So the opposing view to Calvinism is Arminianism. The opposing view to Catholicism is, um, is, um, um, Protestantism. Um, well, not so much. Uh, they could is um, um, Muslims, Islam. You know, so and and so they all have opposing views. You know, so the three right. world religions is Jew, Jews, Christianity, and and Islam. So those, so and that's that's where that's coming from. So the only way, you know, only way to really combat that is to you know to show holes in both. You say, no, we don't believe Trinity because, first of all, this is wrong. Trinity is, is not even in the Bible. And we don't believe modalism because they believe that the Son is God, and we don't. And so you show that, it, no, it can't be that because we don't believe what they believe. And now you shut them up. They, they, well, you're, mo you're, you're modalist. or well, you're not. You can't be a modalist if you don't believe their doctrines. So, and you can't be Arminianism because Arminianism believes you can lose salvation. Calvinism believes you can't lose salvation, but they believe salvation is only to the elect. So we show you. So the more you know what they teach and where where their holes are, the more you can shoot that down. But that's uh, again, that's all a distraction of the devil to just try to you know. And that's the thing. See, that's the problem. What what we were studying in earlier was that. We're talking to the wrong people. You know, it, are those the people that God sent us to? I don't believe so. The ones that are arguing these kind of things and stuff like that? No. We right. need to be fishers of men. And Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. Let him make us fishers of men. Let him bring us the men to speak to. And all we need to do is be ready to preach to who, whosoever he brings to. Because the ones he brings to are ready to hear, ready to listen. We're talking to the wrong people. That's why we keep running into this. Right, right. I like the way you said that. So avoid foolish questions yeah, and unlearned. You know, there's a lot of scripture about what to avoid uh, when it comes to other, what other people are saying. Sound doctrine. Yeah, it says avoid sound doctrine. What does it say? No, don't, don't avoid sound doctrine, but avoid... Um, yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. For example, we just had a whole hour study of edification, and we ain't had one of these people of fishes in here or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We don't need them. Well, so I think we put too much emphasis on bringing somebody in to have a study versus actually let's study the Bible. And when someone comes in because we sent out the link and God sent them, then we stop studying and preach to that person. I think it's better that way. Right, right. It's like it's like, it's just like fishing. You drop the lines and you just wait for the bite. You know That's what fishing is. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a few here, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions. So you avoid contentions and strivings about the law, for they are pro unprofitable and vain. Yeah, exactly. So right there, like even genealogies. That's a big one, yeah. because. I mean, in Hawaii, I know that for sure. In Hawaii, I know Hawaiians, they have a lot of pride, too. That's why. And and they they, they boast a lot about their genealogies and their uh, ancestors, uh, ancestors belief system. Um, they they would back it up, you know what I mean? And, and it wasn't even there. But, to avoid, avoid it. Yeah, so, but it says here to avoid foolish questions and genealogies. What is contentions? I think contentions is like uh, somebody's arguing, I think. Arguing, yeah, that's what I was getting at. Um, Man is a heretic. This is what they call us, yeah, sometimes I notice. They call us a heretic, yeah? So there's contention here in the, in the, with Paul and Barnabas. 
So if they were not in agreement, they were opposed, like their their words were opposed to each other, I think here. Um, where it says, uh, in some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, um, sorry, let me just, and then it says, so Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take them with him, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. So Barnabas wanted to take John, whose surname was Paul, uh, was Mark, sorry, whose surname was Mark. And Paul thought it was not good to take them, take him with them. And they had a contention about it. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. So I think contention is uh, they're not in agreement. They're they're saying uh, opposite, yeah. you know, different things. They're not in agreement. Yeah. But we're to avoid that, avoid, avoid contention. Yeah. I wonder what it was all about, though. I mean, was it the doctrine that he was preaching that, that he was contentioned about? Or are you talking about Paul didn't want to take Mark? Yeah, he took Silas. What was that? I forget the story, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Let's look at that. I think Mark was being a little weak. He departed from them. Um, yeah, look. Uh, Acts 15. 39. Um, so why was it that Paul did not want to take, why did Paul think it not good to take uh, John, whose surname was Mark with them, and Barnabas wanted to, and so they had such great contention about it. Um, it says in that passage, why? Oh, is this it here? We departed from them carefully and went out them to the work. So it's, 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 uh, but Paul thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. So is this we're talking about? Um, uh, there you John? Go. Oh, he, he departed. departed. He, he didn't, didn't stand do the work. by his boys. He was like, man, the, the dude left. He didn't stand and fight together. That's why he was weak. Just All right, there, yeah, yeah. To um, give my report, if that's okay. Go ahead, uh, brother. Jesus yeah, wept. I believe that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh, and He was sent to His own people. They rejected Him. He was crucified, buried. He rose again on the third day, and then He was seen. Amen, brother Pat. Right. And what's the scripture, brother? Uh, Jesus, what? Um, yeah, I said in the beginning. All right. I, yeah, awesome. How you doing there, Patrick? I saw you come in, but I was going to say hi, and then. No, y'all were y'all were in the middle of your um situation. Um, but you know, you know, I got to ask. Um. So, and I, this is something I I you know would love to look at further um you know with gaining wisdom and um you know being wise in the scriptures that's cool but i want to earn eternal reward so if you know fishing um for men needs to be kind of looked at you know so it can be done according to scripture then i definitely you know I want to look at that, but I don't know. I just feel like it's the only other person that I know that actively, you know, tried to fish, whatever that looked like, you know, and I know no one's trying to discredit the effort that I am, you know, doing, but I know it's easy to kind of just, you know, sit back and, well, you ain't doing this. You're not doing that. And, you know, I, I want to be, I definitely want to do everything according to God, but um, 
there's really no but. But you know, Bjorn kind of at the beginning. <laughs> Glad you said what? I was gonna say what's the but? And then you said there's not really any. Yeah, but. there's not a but. Yeah. Um uh Bjorn, he fished a little bit when I first came in. He would like, you know, try to find people. But um I don't know. I just want to look at that because that's something that's important to me because of eternal rewards. You know, the going and taking a word and digging into it and trying to, you know, get revelation and all of that. That's cool. And that's amazing. And, you know, God growing my understanding. But if being great in heaven means that, you know, uh, a large part of it, from what I'm understanding, is preaching the gospel. That's what we're commanded to do. I know that reading and, um, you know, living holy, all those, you know, you get rewards for those too. So I'm just really posing the question. I don't want anybody to, you know, uh, like semi go on attack mode. I just am genuinely asking, you know, everybody knows my approach to this. I am actively trying to fish so everybody, we all can earn rewards. And so what does that, what does that look like if I'm going to fish? Cause I definitely want to continue fishing. I definitely want to, you know, get people on here. You know, if we're, people well, are going to be, they're going to have foolish questions. Anybody, anybody that seems they, their hearts open, they can have a foolish question. So I don't know. I just want to look at it in scripture. You know, you know. just like, it's, I mean, I think you do it. You're fishing. You know, I, I think we're fishing, we're all fishing. You know, it's kind of like a boat. You know, I can go fish on a boat by myself. But in this case, we got a bunch of brothers that we, we all believe on the same doctrine. So we're all fishing to get on the same boat when we come onto this stream yard. That's what I'm looking at it as. Yeah, well, I think what well, we addressed this earlier, fishing is done by Jesus, not by us. He said, yeah. I, will, I will make you fishers of men. So he's the one making us fishers of men. It's not us to go out and fish. He makes us fishers of men. It's up to us to immediately be ready to preach the gospel. That's putting on a full armor of God. It says, be ready with the be prepared. What is he prepared with the gospel of creed? That's what we're, that's that's our duty. Jesus is the one that fishes men. He's making so we're us not, fishers of men. So based on what y'all study today, we're not supposed to actually go out and bring our gospel report to people. Well, Let's look at scripture, man. I, I, I just yeah. like to I just like to look at well, what I, I want to look at it too. It's just it's like that's, yeah. That's just like just go to the what does the scripture say about that's trying the spirit? Says. Let's go by what the word says. So yeah. Let's look at yeah, I think we're we I think we're all trying to do that. We're all trying all right, to do that. So let's pull it up. Yeah, there's um, a few scriptures, yeah. Um, yeah. This one here, be ready be able to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to everyone that asketh you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So, you know, Pete, these are That's a good one. Um, the reason. Uh, and then in Ephesians 6. Well, hold on one second. I want to look at that. Yeah. That's a good um, one. So it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So that's someone asking you. Yeah, that's somebody so, asking. So, okay, so what, you know, am I putting myself in that position? Um, or is God placing me like, you know, what Kale just mentioned? Yeah. To have someone ask me, like, how am I, you know, am I just... I don't know. I just feel like it's well, kind of when saying you came that to study, you I have to, you know, I don't know if I did ask. I asked somebody else. I asked. Um, <clears throat> so, so in this, in no, so, so for this scripture, in this case, now we're on the other side. Now we asking them, what is the hope within you? Instead of somebody asking us, what is the hope within us? So mm -hmm. this is like a flip on this one. This scripture is about uh, if a man's asking, asking you. you. Yeah, You're somebody asking you. Latin, you right? With yeah, not so we asking them like, in that situation. Different. So, so far, it's just feeling like, you know, I'm not supposed to be proactive. Like, I'm a go-getter. I want, you know, I mean, but let's keep looking at the scripture. Because, right. I mean, he's making you a fish so you can fish. If he's making you a fisher of men, 
He's giving you the template so you can be fishers of men. So let's just continue looking at it. Well, the proactive part is to be straightway, um, you know, when we to be fish. prepared, to be ready. Well, no, 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 straightway, straightway, straightway is, is actually what is in action. It's a proactive action. Being prepared, you're being, you're already prepared for this straightway action. So when he, they straightway took up their nets, left their father and, and went and followed Jesus and they preached the gospel. So that's the proactiveness is you're straightway doing that at the moment's notice. Like you would go into the stores, grocery stores, and preach to people. I mean, that's perfect. It yeah, I want to look at that one too, the straightway. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's like, did they just wait like they were, you know, on Jesus's coattail? Like, okay, you, you got, you got no, the people? Okay, I'm ready. Right. Like, we can go to scripture. Yeah, yeah. The scripture. Yeah, I want to look at the straightway too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, one scripture for its hand. And we looked at this one here. So this is what commandment to the church, of course, be ready always. And then uh, I brought up Ephesians 6 here where it says, in, uh, in order to be able to stand, in order to be able to stand against wiles well the devil, part of putting on the whole armor of God, we need to put on the whole armor of God. But part of that is having your feet uh, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So you're being, you know, you're prepared, you're ready. Um, you know, you have the you have the gospel of peace. Your feet are shod with it, and uh, straightway they left their nets. Right. So yeah, we looked at straightway. So straightway is just they dropped everything they were doing and and got into action. So yeah, they didn't hesitate all, all, or anything. They just went. yeah, they just they just did it. They were they just went for it. Nothing to it, but, but to do I'm it. trying to look at the went foring it. <laughs> you know, like how how does that look? Because if I'm just preaching, here, just start well, preaching. I know, but I'm saying like, okay, I'm going to the grocery store. Now I'm going to make so many unintentional trips to the grocery store just to preach. I'm not, uh, we're, not saying, okay, <laughs> we're not saying you only have to preach at the grocery store. He went everywhere and it's not unintentional. It is intentional. intentional. But I'm just saying um, it, you, you may straightway while you're on a study, like we were going to those, mm. uh, uh, those things and and uh, try to get someone talk to someone or whatever I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, we we well, we used to go to the beach and just talk to whoever. And so I guess with the is he breaking up? I think he froze. He yeah, froze. If you can do this, Kel, you're... Yeah, because I want to ask. Him, I want to definitely. That's one of the main things. I, I want to. Okay, BK, hey, you you just broke hey, up. Hey, you there? You back? We had a couple questions. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm uh, heading off to my son's game. Let's see, I need to put the address in here. I, I, I had a I had a question too for 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 brother Kel. Um, I, on I want to get straight way out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put this address. In this straight way is like they they just like they just straight away did the straight way. They just, didn't straight away. Like they, they, they straight, straight out of like straight out of but straight. They didn't do a straight bunch of other things and then leave straight, 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 the straight away left their nets. Straight to the juggler. That's all. Immediately, oh. immediately. And it's yeah, it's nothing wrong with you know straight way asking people hey you know can you want to join our study we send the link out all the time but that's it you know it's like if yeah. they come they come if they don't they don't and then in the meantime we're studying and getting some edification just like we're doing now we're learning we're it's, the study is good there's nothing wrong with study we're supposed to do that it says study to shoot ourself approved unto god you showing yourself approved unto god it's not a bad thing to study so Actually, and, and the preaching link. is not the only way we earn rewards. So, just so you know, <laughs> yeah, I mentioned that earlier. But um, so okay, well, it, you keep on emphasizing I want to earn rewards. Well, you you can. It's not just preaching. How else well, can you? Well, again, the preaching part, those things I'm doing, you know, for myself. But the the preaching, this preaching, it benefits us all. So um, that was that's one of the main reasons, I guess. You know, I don't know, um, but that genuinely is my intention behind it. I I, I don't want to just get those rewards for myself when I easily could. Um, 
So, yeah, that's why I'm – but what I was going to say is uh, I don't want to cut Brother Daniel off because he said he had a question, but I asked my question. So, for um, – well, I think – honestly, yeah, honestly, man, I mean, if you know, I don't think we – really need the you know the rewards that way because i think we're all preaching in our lives so i think we we just kind of do this as we come together this is not like we need those people to get rewards you see what i'm saying so if, if you're doing it for our sakes i would say man oh let's take that burden off of you we, we don't we appreciate it but we definitely don't need it we we're all preaching outside of these studies yeah okay yeah, so no i mean I, we appreciate it but it's definitely not needed so if that's the re reason you were doing it, then take that burden off you, man. We don't we don't want to burden you. Well, but, I wouldn't say having, the burden. But, it's not a burden. No. I enjoy preaching. I enjoy fishing. I enjoy doing all these things because, you know, that's what the Holy Spirit has put in me. So it's not like it's a burden. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, we um, all need to do it for our sake is what I'm saying. Yeah. Whether it's okay. a burden or not, you know, do it for your sake. You earn your rewards. And uh, that's fine. You know, we don't we, – we're – we're all doing enough preaching. I know Daniel's preaching, uh, Michael's preaching. We all, Kurt's preaching. We all we this, we preach. Well, what's in our what's enough lot. preaching though? What's enough preaching? Well, we didn't say it's enough. We're just saying we're doing it. We're earning our rewards. It's not like we need it. It's not. You can yeah, because I'm trying to do it all the time. So I, I yeah, yeah. Well, that's fine. Do it for you. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We don't need. We don't need you to do it for us. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Oh, okay. Brother Patrick, it sounds to me like you're just saying like you want to make, you want, like we're all saying, is that let's dig into the scriptures and, and see how does God want us to preach, how does God want us to be a fishers of man and that kind of thing, and just do everything according to God's word. And that's all we're doing, I think, all of us on the study. So, like, we're always um, growing, right? All of us together. And uh, Yeah, so sending the link, sending the link, you know, is that that's not um that's still okay to do um from what is being said sending the link and actually trying to you know yeah. get people to join the studies that's done nothing wrong yeah, with that because it's to whosoever so, yeah, so you you're just, being you're like, being you're fishers just making yourself available. Yeah. well well not so much you're making yourself available you're being ready you're straightway being ready you're making yourself available to whosoever no. just like when paul and peter would stand up they would they would say hey whosoever <laughs> listen up these words of salvation is for you that fear of god that's it they just send them the link out no. that's all that's it they, they have the platform and they use their platform to speak, speak to whosoever would listen and that's all we're doing I, we're just saying let's not go more effort and go into it more than what god has no. asked us to do Let's just let's just do what the the part that he asked us to do. That's it, and not burden ourselves. He says, "My yoke is easy, my burden is light," and that's all. That's all we're asking. I got but you. Cool. Hey, I'll let you guys finish talking because I got to run. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Lord Drive willing. safe. Appreciate you too. I'll look, I'll look into right. the game. I'm just, I just, you know, like what is a what is enough and what is not stop virtue. Um, because I feel like it's a always kind of a thing. It shouldn't just be like, yeah, oh, I've, I've done my quota right? for today or this week. It's like it should always be. So, off like, the top of the study, the question came up like, uh, you know, how should we preach? You know, what is, um, what, you know, with, with how should basically how should we preach and then that kind of thing. So, we're just looking at scriptures and I thought, well, because, you know, God tells us to follow Paul, be followers of Paul. And so we look at the like the different times through scripture that paul preached the gospel and basically that's where i we got i got to or whoever's on the study earlier um Gundert, kale uh and then daniel came in and uh patrick and uh and tyrese there and um but i think that'd be a good start like to to look at is like how did paul preach like x says where to follow paul um it seemed like paul didn't really to me it seems like paul didn't really like do much back and forth and like entertain many questions like he would say what he has to say and then 
people would like believe it and some would mock, you know, and then he would go to the next people. So that was the thing I, I just brought up at the beginning, um, just to follow Paul and then how Paul preaches. And then um, that was just one thing I noticed was it didn't seem like he did much back and forth arguing or anything like that with people. And it tells us not to uh, serve to the Lord must not strive and to avoid contentions. Um, so just a couple of things we looked at, but it's, it could be like a much deeper study. Like it's an important thing, right? How we preach. Yeah. The whole reason that we joined all of our, our, our channels together is that we could all benefit. That was the whole, um, uh, that was the whole drive behind us doing a group chat so we could have, so all the brothers could benefit for anybody being in here. Um, yeah. I mean, it'd be collective and, you know, we could all earn, you know, rewards off other brothers. So it just is feeling a little contrary um, to that, which I, I get that, you know, I've said this before, we do things and then we see what the word of God is actually saying and then we correct it and we do it. But I just feel like, you know, the whole me fishing and all of that is just kind of, I don't know. Is so like the bait, it, it would be the, different the, if like everybody here was fishing, you know, but it's like now my, the way, you know, I'm, everything is being, um, you know, it's like, so like the know. bait would be the titles. Like everybody, we can change our title. Yeah. That's right. On the, um, on the topic <laughs> me, of the day. Let me try and clarify because I haven't really talked to this point much. So, like, the, what's the problem? Is it the... Uh, it doesn't sound like it's, it's the amount of preaching that's being done. It sounds like it's how you're fishing. So, like, I just want yeah. to hear a little bit more. Yeah. So, the, the how the how is fishing is it's been corrected. I stood in error. So, what's the and, other... So, what's the other issue? Well, I mean, it was just said that, you know, it's like you know, when I said my intention is to bring, you know, I'm bringing fish for all of us, you know, not it being a burden. It's not a burden. I enjoy fishing. That's like, it's like a hobby. I enjoy preaching, of course, just like any other brother here. But the whole initiative with us joining all of our, our groups, you know, all of our YouTube channels, it was for all of us to partake in the blessings and the rewards of what we're doing. So that's, you know, that's what I went in theme with. I'm bringing people to all of us so we can all collectively. So yeah, definitely how I'm, how I'm doing it definitely needs to be, you know, because saying, Oh, come bless us because you're going to be allowing us to earn rewards off your unbelief. Like that's, that's using enticing words. Or, you know, so I get that. I understand it. And I appreciate the Lord. Correct. That was all God, you know, correcting me with the word of God. Um, so it's just like nobody else is fishing. Yeah, you y'all may start a clubhouse or you may whatever, but no one's actually actively trying to get people in. I mean, I'm not saying it hasn't happened because, I mean, we've, we've all done it at least a couple of times. But everybody sees i'm trying to you know like bring it bring people here it's it's no like oh i feel like oh this is a work you know um there's been times where i feel like why haven't brothers come and actually partake yeah i may have been frustrated with that but i don't feel necessarily burdened because i know i'm i'm benefiting from it I, i'm getting a reward no matter what but it's like so but now it's you know it's like okay well stop what you're doing because, you you know, we really need that, you know, or whatever. And so, I don't know. I just wanted to be according to the scripture. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. Right, if you invite somebody into us to, that's, he thinks wants to hear the truth. And, you know, I don't think that's anything wrong at all. But uh, here it says, so neither, then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. It's now, all God. Plant, it's all uh, God. Everything I do. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't mean to cut you so off. I'm apologize. not anything. You're not, you know, we're not anything. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So I think like our, I don't think my labor could get you rewards, and I don't think your labor could get me rewards. And it says, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So, oh, that's a good point right there. So the, I don't the, think there's anything wrong bringing people in to hear the gospel um, if they're willing to hear it. And you know, a man that's a heretic after the second, first, or second admonition reject. Definitely, you know, he's converted. Um, but you know, we all we're all going to earn our own reward according to our own labor. Yeah, I mean, if you preach, if you're here, if you're doing the work, of course. So if I'm fishing and I bring, if I brought the fish, I mean, here, and you're doing the, you know, you you're putting in the work by preaching and whatever, it's not me, you know that has god has brought that increase you are getting the war by your work i'm just like you know i would say what a you know i'm just god is just using me to do his will so it's not like i'm trying to take credit for um what god is doing i know god brings an increase god is the only one that bring, brings an increase um but if that fish from the work that i you know did was never presented, then you couldn't put in the work to get that reward. Yeah, but but I would like to for that though. It's like in all things work together for good to them that love God, to them hard to call it according to his purpose. It's you know, we're not anything. Neither the one that planted is not anything, the one that water is not anything. Yeah. So it's I don't think God. you're feeling about us at all. You know, it's just about we're all brothers in the Lord, you know, preach the gospel to whosoever. I don't see anything wrong bringing people into a study at all. That's for sure. But, um, you know, when we look at how Paul preached, I just think it's edifying because, you know, I'm, it's good to be in the way of instruction, right? Mm -hmm. So if there is anything I, sh I myself should change about how I preach the gospel, I don't want to look at the scriptures and see what might that be. Yeah, it's definitely straight to the point, but I'm, I'm waiting for PT to respond to what I, what I was saying since he asked the question. Are you waiting for me to respond? <laughs> I mean, I just want to hear what because I'm I'm honestly it's like I don't I don't get discouraged easily. Um and I wouldn't even say I'm discouraged in this moment. I just know that you know it's this is God, you know, growing me as a man of God and how I live unto him. Um well, like you said, I thought we cleared up like how the enticing words or whatever should be mm -hmm. not there. But it seemed it seemed like it's another issue now. But it sounds like the same issue. What does it seem? What does it seem like? Well, I, I was I guess I'm confused just on what we are trying to clear up now. So you were saying the the, the fishing part. So is that is that the issue? People not doing enough fishing or what? Well, it's not. I mean, you can do what you can do. You know, you can do whatever. I I'm definitely not. Um, I don't have like any brother can do as much as they want to do. That's not. You know, the, the times that I presented in before, I may have felt some type of way that, oh, you know why? But I'm not I'm not there anymore. I've, I've grown past that. But I just feel like uh, now, yes, the way that I'm fishing, the way that I was fishing uh, was not according to scripture. And so now it's like, OK, Jesus is making us fishers of men. So I'm just trying to like how does that look you know because i definitely don't want to be doing anything that i don't have to do um you know i want to do everything that i'm supposed to be doing and then you know what was the whole initiative behind us what do you believe our initiative behind bringing all the channels together it was so all of us could benefit from this and it just not on our one platform you reach more exactly people. i think I think I think yeah. the the reason why we put them all together was because we all could have a word of God study together at the same time, having notifications at the same time, and preaching together. That's what I think we should we have the channel together for a reason. We preach the gospel together. We all on the same boat. 
fishing together. You can reach more people too, right? If you if you're on Daniel's channel also and you're preaching the gospel, people following Daniel's channel. So right? yeah, I get questions that so sometimes preach. when I'm not even in the study, I get questions on my YouTube channel that people send me. And then they look into our study and they they find they hear the answers without me even there, you know. But yeah, the the, the point of putting to, the channel thanks together to you guys. is just so more people can listen to the studies. That's all. Yeah, it's not like now we're all receiving rewards just because it's on my YouTube channel. We get rewarded for the labor, and whether we do a study or preaching that's both labor and yeah. the things done good and bad uh, studying and before. preaching is laboring yeah i would say that yeah, too and, yeah. and preaching is good studying with brothers is good fellowshipping is good i think those, those are all rewards it's not only preaching so um i, I think that's it and what started off this initial deeper dive into um what we've been studying is what you said at the beginning um, when you said I'm deceiving them to preach the gospel to them so that's where it started off and n now we're just you know do doing a deeper dive into the study where we just see Paul preaching to people that actually want to listen and you got someone like Jordan setting up a clubhouse with a title um, where people are actually interested um, in the topic, right? And that's just one example of many. So I, I think that's that's a, a good approach, where where we get people that actually want to have the answer to what the title might say, right? Like he makes studies. Where like, do you know for sure that you'll be in heaven? People want to know, so they join. So now he has listening ears instead of having people um ask them for their testimony and i want to learn that that was the enticing part but we want to uh, get in front of people like the gentleman in act 16 right where he was uh, in that situation or in mars hill where they asked paul um uh what did they say like we want to hear more on this matter. We want to get in front of those people. So that's all. You know, laboring is great. So keep on laboring. And I just encourage you to get in front of people that actually want to listen and not talk. Just like Paul. Maybe that's street preaching. Maybe that's clubhouse preaching. Maybe that's facebook whatever um <clears throat> but if, if you're messaging them with with words um kind of showing that you want to learn from them that's not what paul did it's the it's the opposite it's they wanted to hear from paul the new doctor. when i said learn from them which is also i know is realized that it's enticing learn from them was some of the questions that they bring up I, it makes me go deeper and I end up learning by the things that they, you know, but that's all enticing. Um, also, I, I think that, that's way. all indirect, right? It's, so you're saying mm -hmm. bless us with, oh, so, so yeah. we're getting blessed because we get rewards. See, it, all of that, that's indirect. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul just did it everything direct. Right. Yeah. So, so I, I think that's exactly the, the wish, the, the, uh, preaching with wisdom of words like you're very smart with the words that you're choosing you know blessing Stop blessing it. us and all of that stuff in an indirect matter and i don't see paul doing that so we shouldn't do it mm -hmm. and plus i mean you put a lot of time um reaching out to people on facebook a lot of labor which i think is good but just think about how much more you can get by putting that same labor um it may be some clubhouse preaching where people actually want to listen right they join you maybe <laughs> or you you can get you um go into one of their rooms where they might have a question 
or there's 200 people already in there. So just, you know, it's a fight. And I think we should pick our fights wisely. Right? Just keep it moving. But get in front of people that actually want to hear. Yeah, I definitely think the way that we um, we're actually um, we're actually preaching to people has become very wise um, because we're basing it on the scripture. You know, the time that we're giving these people um, is it, just is a lot quicker. This, you know, they're just a lot quicker, straight to the point. Whereas before it was just these drawn out, you know, we're letting them bring all this crazy stuff and whatever. But like, I never, yeah. I've never ran in, I've never bumped into anyone on the internet or on the streets or family members or friends. I haven't met anyone like us. Tell you the truth. I truth. haven't met, I haven't met anyone that, seeks the lord the way we do or 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 uh preaches the gospel the way we do i don't i haven't bumped into that person yet mm -hmm. maybe so. for about half an hour i got a client meeting at four thirty or well, four th four o'clock my time is in like two minutes from now but hopefully i can jump back on in about half an hour okay sorry, sorry. Right. Cool. Then, michael hopefully congrats thank, you. Your, thank um, you for the early thank yeah, you for the early your, study bike remember. Hopefully you guys be here in half an hour or so. On your semester, uh, finishing your semester to congrats on that. Oh, thanks, brother. Yeah, I see you guys. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Godspeed, Michael. Godspeed. Maybe you just... Preach a tea. Congrats on Godspeed. the uh, anniversary. Oh, thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you for being a, a great a example. Percy, what you guys? what you guys cooking, PT? Well, it was yesterday, sir. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ben, you always ask me for the food. What's yeah. guys? You're always hungry, but yep, yeah, I, I appreciate you being an uh, example of a you know husband, a uh, man of God, a father, and just being you know just being um, a consistent, um, consistent example in the fellowship. So I appreciate everything you do. Hey Amen. I appreciate it. Hey, y'all, I'm excited about this uh, polishing. I've been trying to get this stuff figured out, and I finally got yeah. it figured out yesterday. So I get to practice uh, polishing some metal today. And then um, my potential client, I spoke to uh, I spoke to one of his employees yesterday. They still looking for somebody to polish metal wheels. So I'm like, yes. So that's still, right. my, still my, I still got a lane open right there. I've just been trying to figure out this polishing game and uh i just got to figure it out so so from your the class that you took you haven't done a client yet well that class i took was for paint correction for oh okay just like removing scratches from a car or from a you know surface or whatever but this this is something different detailers don't do what i'm trying to do right now so that's why i'm gonna be more valuable to a lot more people like uh just mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever seen them big rigs that's like all metal and like the semi trucks that have all metal wheels. Yeah, on. yeah. Like big so foam rims, yeah. Yeah, so. pe people want those polished and you gotta you gotta call up a metal polisher to like get that type of service. A auto detailer, nine times out of ten don't do that. Oh wow. But this auto detailer do. <laughs> so that's why <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. why I got on it. So they got they got some limo buses ready to go, bro. They got they got these six wheel six wheel limo buses ready to go with chrome wheels. And if I can figure it out, it's one fifty oh, a bus. Wow. Yep, that that's like a monthly thing. It's per mm. bus, one fifty a bus, oh. bro. So six times that. Mm. Yeah, six six wheels on a limo bus, and that's one fifty. So it's about twenty five thirty per wheel. And uh, and they got a fleet of buses, and then uh, even the employee he has a personal like rig. He wants me to polish the wheels on that, so I just know it's gonna it's gonna be a uh, like a snowball effect type of thing. So, yes, hard brother. It sounds good, brother. Be ready. Yeah. I know, man. I've, I've been trying to get ready for months, and I just Where's haven't had the right now? pieces. Yeah, you gotta do some calisthenics before you start work. Sounds like you gotta stretch out. 
Everybody <laughs> jumping jacks. That's a fact. Before we start work, man. We got to get warmed up, man. That's a fact. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the garage today and actually try to polish a piece of throw I have. If it looks good, I'm going to pull up to those guys like Wednesday and try to complete that deal. So I need that for real. That's so soft, brother. Yeah, I pray you get that, man. Yeah, I pray you guys. I wish you the best, too. Because I got to make sure my process is right. Yeah. Yeah. That was a quick call, Brother Mike. Yeah, he canceled, uh, hopefully, rebook on Tuesday. It's a for sure meeting, but um, canceled last minute, too. Just looking going to carry out three schedule later this week, I guess. I take a mm -hmm. gospel. I take a gospel break right now. I like to share the gospel. I, I like to share that I believe on Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But I also believe that he came as a son of God. And he came as the mediator between God and man. That's the man Christ Jesus. But the man Christ Jesus is the man. And I believe that the Holy Spirit in the man Christ Jesus is God. That the spirit in the man is God. And God dwelleth in him. And that the man Christ Jesus died on the cross on the sins of the world as an innocent man. And he was buried. On the third day, God rose him from that grave. And he was seen of many. And that is the gospel of salvation. That we must believe that God was in him and rose him. And, and he was seen of many. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for letting me share. I noticed a lot of people share that gospel, but they always forget about the witnesses. I catch them all the time. And it bothers me. I don't know why it bothers me, but it bothers you guys as well. I know that. But it, it, it's, yeah. And they leave a lot out. Yeah, they leave a lot out, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely part of the gospel. Yeah. Seem like they wanna believe what they but what they wanna believe. And that's when they come up with their own doctrine. Yeah, yeah people okay. always try to include the works. I hear that a lot. Oh yeah, Jesus all the way. Oh yeah. You gotta repent though. Hold on, you can't sin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like uh, Jonah for that, Jonah 3, where he says, um, uh, and God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did it not. So God, like, defining turning from their evil way as works. So I'm people out there teaching falsely that you need to turn from sin and that kind of thing. There would be works. Oh, that's what it's saying, yeah, in the scripture. Yeah, I, that'll be work, yeah. But in Ephesians, it says, so For by grace are you saved through faith, not, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any mention most. So you can't be saved by turning from your evil way, that's for sure. Because it, 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 it never said in the scriptures where that you can be saved by your works. It doesn't say that, yeah. <laughs> it never said that, yeah. Well, you can get be you can be saved by your works that you do. You could just be a good Samaritan. You'd be saved. Uh, he he did the work. Yeah. Yeah. So we must believe that Jesus did the work through through him, not through us. Yeah. Brian, it's it's a good study about um you know how we should preach what. No, I think that would be a blessing is uh, in the maybe, you know, God would open more doors or if it would be more effective in preaching or like God gives the increase, right? So if we're doing it God's way, according to how God wants us to do it, then that would probably, that would be best, right? Because we're, you know, just to follow his instruction. And, uh, and I think, you know, how we follow Paul. So I would, that's why I would think like we would just, I would look at examples of like how Paul preached, Mars Hill and, 
Acts 13 and other places. And then how did Paul preach? Did people come to him? Did he go into the synagogue? Did he entertain a bunch of questions? Like how, you know, that kind of thing and follow Paul. Amen. We're all going to need, you know, correction and instruction until, you know, until the Lord comes in the clouds or until, you know, until we're with him anyway. So it's good, good right. to see. To me, it's like we do Word of God studies on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you Sunday. So that's when we do the studies. If someone comes in, we almost put a pause on the study and we start the preaching. We do, yeah. Right? Or we start a study with preaching and then we, we do the study. Yeah. So it's studying and, and preaching are definitely two different things. So to me, right. it's like... These are study times, and then if someone comes in, yeah, we should definitely preach. Yeah, and we definitely. do. The, we'll pause there because we know, as believers and brothers in the Lord, we know like the doctrine is for the believer, and that understanding is with the believer, and that the unbeliever needs to hear the gospel. So we we do that anyway. I think we we will we'll pause our studies and preach the gospel when someone new comes in, or um, and as you said, we still open up with the gospel and we'll do gospel breaks. So yeah. definitely two different things. Yeah. It's good to know. Uh, I think how best one to do thing, there's the one thing I love about our studies. If there's one thing that I love about studies, is that we're all different. We all look different. We all get different color skin. We all from different parts of the world, of the earth, and but we all believe on the same gospel. We believe that one God and in that one mediator between God and man. And we believe that that in the gospel of salvation, and that kind of paved our way to our understanding of of where we get this understanding from. Is it came from the gospel? Because I mean, we we was when we first came onto this this um when we first started having fellowship. Oh, hey, Rick. Hey, Daniel. Welcome in, Rick. I believe this is an OG, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a while. I just happened to be awake, and um, I noticed Happening. you guys were were on live, so I thought, oh, I'll jump on. There you go. Yeah, appreciate you joining. Yeah, thank you. Weren't you from Australia? Or New yeah, Zealand? that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, born and raised in uh, New Zealand, now living in Australia now. So, are, are you? Hey, Rick, did I meet you before, Rick? I, th I I think so br briefly. Um, I think you spoke with my wife. I think it was because yeah. you, you're in Hawaii, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Hawaii. Have we have we met in person though? Nah, 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 nah. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I may look, I may look like a like a family, but. Uh, because I, I, I'm 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 Polyn I'm Polynesian um, anyway, so because I'm from the yeah. Cook Islands. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but can can, so can I share? Can I can I share the gospel just quickly anyway before we carry on? Yeah. Uh, well, ahead, I man. I believe I believe that um, uh, Jesus is the only name to call up to call on. Uh, it's the name that saves. It's the only name that saves. There is no other name. It's a heavily name, so it's not translated or, um, and it's not in English. It's the his name is is from heaven. Uh, it's the the name of uh, it's God's name, um, and Jesus Christ inherited that name. Uh, the Father sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, uh, to His own. Uh, the Jews, the Jews, and they. Uh, um, wanted him crucified. So um, on that cross, uh, Jesus died for the, the sins of the world and he was buried. And uh, on the third day, uh, he was risen and seen by many, uh, over 500 witnesses. Um, yes, uh, and I, I, I believe I believe this. I, I believe this took place. And... Um, Rick, what's going on, man? I ain't seen you in so long. I actually was thinking about you the other day, too. How you been? 
Yeah, I, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I try not to complain, you know. <laughs> I hear you. It's, it's so to easy. To, yeah, yeah. No, like, likewise. Amen yeah. to the gospel, by the way. What time mm. is it over there? Uh, about half four in the morning now. Okay. Wow. wow. Up early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just um, yeah, you, just one of those mornings where you just um, how would you say it? You just have something on your mind that gets you up and won't allow you to to get that rest. I guess. Yeah, is everything okay? Is there any, anything we need to pray for? Um. Yeah, I I, I haven't I been mean, feeling well. You don't have to well. share it if it's too personal. I mean, you can. Oh no 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 no! Because no, no, no. I'm speaking to the right people concerning mm, things that I'm ch um, being challenged by. So, okay. Why 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 not? Um, because we believe uh, in the the one and only, don't don't we? And we're family, so. Definitely, yeah. It, it's just life. I think that's what Patrick m meant too. So, so uh, I don't, yeah. Well, it's. I'll, I, mean, I'll, I don't I'll, know what it is, but if it's too personal, just know people might be listening and watching. I, I don't really. I'm not really concerned Go about ahead. that. I'm just concentrating trading on us because um, I, I I need to be prayed on anyway. So how? Have you been sharing the gospel, Rick, on the street? I, 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 I do, I do. I haven't been leaving my house that 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 much because um, I haven't been well. But that you know, so it's just um, re regarding my health. I just you know, I, that's what I I specifically need prayer on. Oh, I dropped out, guys. Oh. Are you are you sick with what? I'm not, I'm not sure because um, at the moment I'm just waiting to get some tests done because I don't have private um, health. Um, I'm on a waiting list to get um, some tests done. Okay. So, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I appreciate you. <clears throat> I appreciate you sharing that. I definitely will be praying for you. Also, yeah. And I'm pretty sure Brother Mike can lead us through some scriptures as he's as he amazingly does. Hey Amen. Praying for you. Um, hey there, Rick. I was good. I like to hear the gospel. That was awesome. Do you believe that um, you have to turn from sin or turn from evil, repent of your sins to go to heaven? No, just believe. And, uh, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, do you think you could ever lose your salvation once you have it? No. Amen. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, that's a good confession there. That's great. Uh, yeah, I'll pray for you for sure. Um, there's uh, scriptures about uh, praying always for all, all saints. Uh, in Ephesians 6, part of the whole armor of God. Um, you know, it is a... Uh, Spiritual battle, right? Spiritual war. You know, there's yeah. king of God, kingdom of God, and then there's king. Satan has his kingdom, and uh, God tells us to be able to to be able to stand against whilst well the devil. We need to put on the whole armor of God. Jesus said, um, "The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and then they might have it more abundantly." So, uh, to stand against whilst well the devil, we need to put on the whole armor of God. And if we just read this for everybody here, uh, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand an evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints 
And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So I'll, I'll, be, I'll pray for you, Rick, for sure. Um, awesome. And uh, I just encourage you, too, to heed to these scriptures about putting on the whole armor of God. So okay. if whether it be, you know, uh, praying and uh, having a feet shot of the gospel of peace, um, taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, all those things, right? The whole, all, all parts of that whole armor of God. Okay. Uh, okay. He also said, uh, come unto me. Uh, all that labor and are heavy laden, uh, and I will give you rest. Um, Jesus, let me just look it up. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So do you, like, do you read the scriptures daily, by chance? No, no, not daily. No. That's one thing you could could do to start, because that's okay. taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is part of the whole armor of God, which you need to do in order to, to stand against the wiles of the devil, to be able to do that. Okay. And then Jesus said, uh, learn of me. Uh, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest into your souls. So maybe if, you, if you're reading daily, you know, in this word. Yeah. He also said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Mm. So, you know, and the words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're life, he said. So I think having the word, you know, I said, uh, let the word dwell richly in you. It's all wisdom. Mm. So like if you're reading daily, I think that would be a big help for you there for sure. Yeah. That's a great scripture there too. Uh, Brother Bjorn just uh, posted, and and if we know that he hear us, this is in First John uh, five here. Yeah, it's about praying too. Uh, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desired of him. So you you know pray for pray for healing, pray for good health. Pray for wisdom, pray for understanding, pray for knowledge, pray in the name, pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, good yeah. to pray in his name. Yes. Also, James 5. Yeah. Um, God's our healer, too. He always says, uh, uh, I'm just looking up some scriptures here, but you know, with the uh, the woman who had the issue of blood, twelve years. Yep, yep. Oh, geez, I want to touch this cloak. Yeah, she was after the physicians her whole life and spent all her money on them, and she was worse off. Even she didn't, none, none mm. of the physicians could even help her in the first place. There was Asa who sought after the physicians and not unto God, and he slept with his fathers the next year. So, I mean, something about uh, scriptures about, um, you know, seeking God over the physicians. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stenched. And she had faith, she said, within herself. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And the woman, when the woman, and when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her daughter, Be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole, go in peace. Um I think the other scripture says how she's said in her heart or within herself that if I only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole like she knew it. Yeah, she knew already, yeah. Mm. She believed already before she even touched him. No no physician could even heal her. Even after 12 years, spent all her living on physicians, 12 years, none of the physicians could, uh, could she couldn't be healed by any of them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Man. 
this one here in Asa. And Asa in the 39th year of his reign was diseased in his feet until the disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease, he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the 140th year of his reign. This was in the 39th year. So let's think of this. It was two years later. But, uh, from the 39th year to the, of his reign until the 140, 140th year. But yeah. he, he didn't seek the, to the Lord, but he sought after the physicians, right? So definitely be praying and uh, reading the scriptures daily would be as part of the whole arm, like the whole arm of God is to take the, yeah. take the sword of the spirit, you know, and uh, yeah. first thing in the garden was like uh, Satan, you know, the serpent that is um, said, yea, hath God said, question God's word. Mm. So, uh, to have your mind renewed in his word. It also talks about your body there as well in Romans 12. Uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So we, we have to do that. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, you know, uh, present your bodies holy, acceptable unto God. Um, but being to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, I believe we get that from God's word. You know, as you're reading, as you're studying, as you're hearing. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm. Re renew your mind. So, so I'll, I'll pray for you for sure, Rick. There was just uh, just some scriptures that come to mind about. Yeah. Amen. I appreciate that. you doing? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Have we looked well, at James 5? Yeah, that's a good one too, yeah. Yep, let's see in uh, 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So if you got brothers praying for you, it, it avails much because we're all righteous, right? Because we got God's mm. righteousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just encourage you to read God's word. Um, you know you're a son of God, right? So mm. let God do the healing. Get get some sunshine. Drink water. Do it. Do it the healthy way that and use the supplements that God did. You know, my mm. mom now has COVID, and she she got back from holiday. She she was um, very sick for one day especially, um, and you know how, how they say COVID is very contagious. I was with her in the car for over one and a half hours I drove her home and I'm not sick at all. Mm. We were eating at the dinner table and all of that. And it's just because I, I believe God keeps me uh, healed, you know, and I Amen. pray. And if I'm, mm. I am sick, I just call brothers to pray for me. Mm. Amen, Kurt. Yeah. And that's how yeah. it should be, right? Because it, it avails much. So yeah. whenever we have anything, mm. Ask brothers to pray for you because you you get a lot back. It avails much. Yeah. So I'll be praying for you, Rick. Awesome. I believe this. I believe it. I, I guess that's – and it's nice to know that, um, you know, to have um, brothers like yourself, like, you know, even suggest maybe not to say anything because it's live, but – I, I know I, I I need I need my brothers to to I need the prayer so it sort of overrides all that other stuff if that makes sense. Amen. Amen. And also, yeah. Uh, if if you type in um, health to thy navel, let me find what. It yeah, is. no, it's Proverbs three six, or Proverbs three eight. Sorry, I think. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think it's seven. 
Let's see, Proverbs 3, 8 it is, yeah? In, in starting in 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear God and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. So just fear God. Don't fear the disease or the outcome or mm. the doctor's opinion or the waiting list. Nah, man. <laughs> Skip all that. Just fear God. And pray. Amen. That's all you need. Yeah. In all that ways, yeah. You know, no matter what situation. Definitely. You better that's just it. that's awesome to to have that um you know to hear it to hear it, especially from you guys, you know, to, uh, from from my own brothers and stuff. It's um it's encouraging. Amen. Yeah. I, that, yeah. That's I think that's um, really that's the purpose of me jumping on and I guess for me not actually being asleep right now. Uh, amen. Um, amen. I brother. believe these these situations bring us closer. Um, it does. To the one who made us, you know. I was just gonna pull up really quick, uh Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Um, it says it is not expedient for me doubtless for me doubtless to glory I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell God knoweth such in one caught up to the third heaven and I knew such a man whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell God knoweth verse 4 how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine affirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And this is a verse that kind of, you know, sticks with me. It's like, you know, through all of it, you know. Uh, Jesus is going to be faithful, you know? Mm. So don't be faithless, be faithful. Yeah. Amen. It's like, it's not our strength, you know, it's God's strength. He said, finally, my mm. brother, be strong, in, not in yourselves. He said, be strong in the Lord. So like when we're weak, you know, mm. we, know we know we're weak. because We ourselves, but God, we have God's strength. That That's why it says that all glory belongs to him. Yeah, it's all that the glory is his. Yeah. Mm. And uh, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Yeah. So it's his uh, his direction, his strength. Uh, every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights. So it's just knowing that it's not our, our own strength, but it's it's God's strength that'll. And pull yeah. it for sure. I, I definitely need to work on that. Um, mm. Also, in Romans 8, it says, uh, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Um, I don't know what line it is here. Just quickly, quickly look it up. In uh, 28, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So, well, like, no matter what it is we're going through, um, it's working for your good. 
according mm-hmm. to God's purpose, you know, and God's, you know, his thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are his ways our ways, right? Like as his thoughts are higher than the heavens, I think it says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. That's why we trust him, right? Like we, we know he's, um, there's no darkness in him. So mm. we, you know, we trust in him. We can trust, he said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. So you can trust him with all your whole, all, all of your heart. And, uh, all things, no matter what it is, are working together for your good, um, according to God's purpose. Um, his thoughts are not our thoughts. You know, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So he's got a purpose, and it's working for our good, no matter what it is. Amen. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts um, than your thoughts. I'll just read these couple here because they're great lines too for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may be that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing where unto where to i sent it so just knowing god's you know his plan is for you or all of us you know no matter what mm. we go through, it's it's working for our good. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them more than God. His purpose, and you can trust Him with all your heart. Or he tells us to. Amen. Um, Amen, brother. And First Peter five, starting from verse uh, six, it says, "Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God." that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking, seeking whom he may devour. Resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplishing your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish strengthen settle you to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen 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 to that it's awesome um, I'll, I'll be definitely um i guess i'll start my um reading when i get back up um and go over the um this recording anyway uh regarding all the scripture you guys have um pointed out so i'll, I'll start my um reading with these these verses you guys have shared with me. So that's awesome. I got gives me a, it says gives me a starting point. Uh, be careful for nothing, uh, but, in, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So, you know, not to be careful for anything, be careful for nothing, but, you know, pray and uh, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and, and the peace of God will uh, will keep your hearts. And minds. Yeah, that's that's encouraging. It, uh, it's definitely something that I'm needing, and you're right too. Um, I guess that's yeah. I, I need to be reading. I there's really no excuse for it. Really, I, I I'll just have to make a start. Yeah, you said uh, sanctify them through that truth. That word is truth, and we know that the, you know the devil is the father of lies. And so the world is full of darkness too, and wickedness. The, world, the whole world lieth in wickedness. So when you know the whole world's like in in wickedness, then having your mind renewed with the word of God, you're going to be able to stand against the wiles mm-hmm. of the devil. So Why, Rick? Be- Rick, have you have you preached the gospel yet to anybody? Yeah, no, I have. I have. Um, you have. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, I think the last time was over the phone to uh, another, well, you know, at the time when, before I heard uh, the the gospel of salvation, um, you know, he was a brother. 
And uh, I was sharing with him. He, he just didn't say yes or no, you know. Um, I'm yet to speak with him because uh, he, he wanted to know, you know, just have a catch-up. So I probably need to re revisit that invite, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I try not to get into a tussle with anyone anymore because I, I just found when I was, when, once I heard it, I was all on fire. And then I, I went straight to my to my wife, all excited and full of energy. And then we got into a... Um, um, a DB. Yeah, it was, it was very full of um, a lot of colors. And uh, yeah, I, I think it took about, almost a, a day for her to come back to me and, and, and then re-hear the whole thing all over again. So it, it definitely took um, time. It, it takes time for some people. It just does. Um, but she's the only one that's ever returned back and uh, has received it. Most people just struggle with it because they're too busy, I don't know, worrying about what their pastor thinks or what their church leadership is thinking um, they're more concerned about other people's opinions rather than what it's what God's word is saying. Because um, I first heard it by accident on YouTube, and Kale was preaching it. And once I heard it, I I just I believed it straight away. Then it just made everything else make sense too um, in Scripture. Because I used to get into and I used to question my, my the, the leadership at church all the time, and they used to just really not like me because I, I didn't take in everything they said. Like, just, you know, I just wouldn't believe them straight away because it didn't make any sense. They'll say one thing, and then the next lesson would sort of contradict what they just taught the week before, and it just didn't line up properly. And, and I, I just had so many questions they couldn't answer, and I was really frustrated because – Nothing made any sense until I heard the gospel of salvation. Um, never, never knew the bit about uh, the 500 witnesses. No one ever, and I, I was born and raised in church, and that, that was Presbyterian. Um, and they never did mention that on your career. Never, ever. So I was, you know, I'm in my 40s, and I've been to Jehovah Witnesses, Mormon, Catholic, Seven Day Adventist, um, uh, the Church on the Moon. I've, I've I've been everywhere, and I've never ever heard or anyone mention the witnesses whatsoever. So when I first heard that, it just it blew me away. Just uh, and then everything else after that, especially after the gospel, and it's like, why don't they? But then again, if I, I didn't hear the gospel of salvation, I wouldn't have been able to even understand any of that stuff anyway. So I, I'm just, you know, I feel really blessed to, for for uh, you brothers, you know, just being bold enough to just do what you do. Because, you know, I, I heard it from Kale, and then I met uh, through, um, through Kale, um, uh, uh, Bjorn, um, there's a few others, but they, I don't know what, what happened to them necessarily. I just know they fell off. Um, oh, oh, you came a long time ago then, yeah, Rick? Years ago. Yeah, yeah, over two years ago now. That's why I recognize you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, was, I've your always... wife, was your wife too um, yep. joining the studies before? Yep, that's, yep, right. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, as. It's just, you know, just when you guys are on live, I'm sleeping mostly. Like, we're, we're you know, and it's like, oh, we just missed it live. Like, you get up in the morning, you guys just finished. <laughs> or, yeah. And uh, when I was working too, um, you know, because I was working, so I, it, it, it's really hard for me to even catch a live. Um, but it's just a blessing now. I'm speaking with you guys um, and to receive. Um, you know, just all the scripture and stuff. And even, you know, being able, I mean, you know, the, this being recorded, I can actually go back on these, um, on the scripture and and read this over and over to my, uh, my, not just to myself, but to my family as well. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. I know some the brothers they they like to um we 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 all read the the same scriptures um we read the King James version and some of us started from like Romans or Acts yeah and then they went all the way to Revelations and then they went go start back from Genesis then they went read the Bible again from Genesis but Starting starting from Romans and Acts is good because, it, I mean, especially if you know the gospel of Jesus already, or if you have read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John already, then when you go into reading from Romans and or Acts, you can see how the how everybody went about it after the resurrection, and and then um, doing it decently in order can can make up a big gap if you're reading the bible for a long time like i was i've read the mm -hmm. bible for a long time but i've never read it decently and in order and when i started doing this for now i would say four years now mm -hmm. going on five years i've been reading the bible steady like that so and it's been very um more it's not confusing anymore you know it's not mm -hmm. So it's more, it makes a lot more sense when you do it in order and you can figure out the timelines by just reading it in order. Um, but it, I mean, I can see what you're saying. I mean, jumping all over, jumping all over is better that you read them in order, decently and in order so that you can, you can answer the questions better when somebody asks his questions about the, the book or so, I would say, that's what I would say. But reading daily is, is a blessing, reading the scripture daily. There's a difference between reading and studying. So, you know, he does say um, here in First uh, Timothy 4.13, um, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You know, so reading the word of God. Um, as Dana said, uh, you know, starting in Romans, if you're starting to read daily for the first time or not but like if you're trying to read through the scriptures i, I started yeah. romans i found that was a great way to start reading exactly what god is writing to the church like uh, yeah. specifically so like all scripture is given by is all is for the believer from you know genesis 1 all the way to the end of revelation but just starting there i found it was a great uh, way to read through paul's writings because that was right like targeted or maybe not targeted but written right to the different churches yeah. And it's for edification. It's the New Testament. It's after Jesus rose. It's, you know, those things. And then coming back to read, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, and Acts, and then going through the Old Testament was a great, I thought, I found it was a great way to um, to start there. And if, it, if you do, uh, if you do read three chapters a day, yeah, uh, the math is that you can read through the whole King James Bible in, in one year or so. Okay. And it's just kind of about not missing days, I guess, at that point. But yeah, so that's, yeah. Uh, reading, I was just going to share this one too, is um, and then studying there where we kind of jump around to the different scriptures here for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line here, little there, little. So that's when we study, go into different topics and come to this book, that book, this line. But when we read, it's great to go in order and then just because one chapter kind of does follow the next and it's and one book sort of does follow the next, and God yeah. is a you know, God of order as well. So mm. Uh, and just wanted to share this other scripture, as you mentioned about people listening to their pastors and mm. that kind of thing, the world and that kind of thing. Is when it says in uh, Romans three, uh, and this is one we, like a lot of us go to a lot of times. They would hear a lot of brethren here quote this: "Is uh, God forbid, ye let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged." So I just wanted to. Uh, to bring that one up. Um, we're in the uh, like the live study group then with us, by chance, or like we have a Google Google group. I know you like time zones a bit different than a lot of. Um, I think I was. I was. Um, I don't know. I I, I think. 
Kale or Bjorn set that up the last time. I'm not sure whether I, I still am, but I found you guys on YouTube quite fast, so I think I am because I'm I, I'm following most of you guys anyway on Facebook. Cool. Yeah, we have a, like a live study group that where we would uh, post a study or post videos yep. of past studies and that kind of thing as well. Okay. That's if fine. you want to leave your email address, maybe we could add you to that live study group if you want. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Um, I don't even know how to work this. Uh, Usually, oh, when we have study, we'll just post the video in there, so like you can if, but um, or what what studies are coming up and that kind of thing. Yeah, are you are you in like Australia then, or? Yeah, I, I yeah, um, living in Australia, Brisbane, Australia, and Australia. yeah, have been for the last twelve years, but born and raised in New Zealand. Oh, okay, New Zealand's not far from Australia, then, eh? No, well, well they're, they're neighbors pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, but is it's it very much, different here. Much different country, uh, New Zealand to Australia. I know, like the size is much different, but like overall, like the people and the yeah, so the um, yeah, the people, the um, the culture is very different. Like almost polar, you know, the opposites. So coming here was a challenge, um, but you know, my uh, me and my wife's, uh, you know, our our kids are born here, so it's home for them. Um, so we just. Uh, make it work for them, if that makes sense. Because, you know, to them, they don't know the difference, but it's home for them. Cool. It's, uh, yeah. It's... Uh, well, that'd be great to get your... If you get, you know, get your ministry going over over there, that's great. we got, you know, brothers all over the world, all, like, different time zones, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, well, it's it's def definitely a, a blessing, um, just overall. Anyway, with um, um, uh, hearing the 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 gospel salvation, it was def definitely just you know um, can't explain that. Um, it gives me comfort anyway, you know, knowing that um, I actually. Am saved, so I'm not questioning it anymore. You know, it's not a, a question mark because I used, to, you know, you, you ask yourself, "Are you?" And when I was first asked, uh, <laughs> when I jumped on uh, with Kale and I think Bjorn was on there too. Uh, Preacher T was on, I think. Um, it's just simple questions. You know, the que questions are so simple. And, you know, you just can't answer them when you're not saved because you just really you don't know. You, you've just been tricked the whole time, you know, and you're full of yourself as well. You know, you're puffed up. And I guess that's probably why a lot of people, when you do ask them the questions, they get really angry really really quickly. Because um, I've, I've found people just get really bent out of shape re really, really quickly. They get so uncomfortable. Uh, that's been my experience anyway. We say, out, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mm. So that's mm. where we really ask people questions sometimes, I think, is to see what, what's in their heart. What do they believe? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and plus, you know, I like the last uh, person I spoke to sharing the gospel, uh, you know, he was asking why I'm asking all these questions. He goes, you, you know I'm a believer. I said, I, I don't know what you believe in. That's the problem, and you, you know, I don't go around loosely saying brother anymore, because you guys call all sorts brothers, and it's like you don't even know whether they really are. You haven't tested them, and they go, "Oh, that's a bit weird." I said, "No, that's it. That actually, tells you in the word to do it, because Try you need to know. Yeah, yeah we, we we need to know, because it's 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 not something that." Yes, you know, we, 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 he, he has set us aside, has he not? Specifically put put us aside. So we, we, we're, we're different. The peculiar people, yeah. He said uh, narrow is the way. Yeah. But it's, I mean, like I said, you know, just 
it's just awesome. Plus, I mean, we we uh, try and listen to the recordings and just let it play in the background while we're doing whatever we're doing. If we're uh, busy, we just play it in the background. But reading the word, no, I, I, I don't do that. I haven't done that. So... There's a great um, software called eSword. I'm not sure if you're aware of it there. This one we're using on the on the video here, but it's um, yeah. it's so free from a lot of platforms. Platform. I don't know if it's free for every platform, but it's a great, uh, it's like you can search through the scriptures by word search. You can highlight stuff. You can, it's really easy to navigate. Yeah, I think my wife downloaded it on to my tablet. Uh, that's all of, oh no, no, it's not. It's a different no, it's a different type of app. Yeah, just have to make sure that there's other apps out there too. You know, um, yeah, just have to make sure it's King James though. Yeah. 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 I encourage you to read daily for sure. It's uh it's like if we eat food daily, right? So man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So for eating food. Most of us probably eat food on it. Some people may fast or not have food or something like that, but like most people probably eat most days food. Yep. I guess. So probably, uh, I mean, for sure, it would be um, good for you to have your spiritual mm. food every day, even more so. I mean, they're not neglected anyway. Um, he said, uh, you know, Backward. Uh, I can't seem to find that line I'm looking for right now, but it was to do with not neglecting the word. I was wondering if it was on my wall there. Uh, I can't find it now, but. Yeah, but not neglecting the word of God, yeah. It's like if you eat food most days. Mm. I, Spiritual food is, you know, how much more important is uh, spiritual food? Yeah. Also, it's like uh, profitable. It's good for you. So in um, Second Timothy 3... 16 no yeah here it's all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for a proof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the men of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works so it's profitable for you definitely not a waste of time that's for sure it's profitable for you And like, you know, myself too, like probably all, maybe I can't speak for everybody here, but you know, I, sometimes my daily reading is not always daily. Like I'll, or like, a, you know, I'm not reading like these three chapters every day when I, when I mean to sometimes, well, okay. it's a good reminder for me too. Uh, but it's for all of us, right? It's um, for correction, mm. for instruction, for proof. So we're always going to need that, right? So we want to grow in wisdom, grow in understanding, oh, yeah. grow in Definitely. knowledge. Well, it's definitely well. something uh, I, I need to do. There's no question about that. And at the end of the day, I mean, you're accountable for what you do anyway behind closed doors. Yeah. And he said yeah. also to uh, admonish one another unto good works, I think he said, to provoke one another unto good works. Yeah, uh, definitely. That's cool. Um, I might step away in a little bit uh, just to, you know, spend some time with my wife and have supper I mean, a little bit and that kind of thing. Um, does anybody else have anything like want to look at in scripture? Is there is any other topics come up? I know we're looking at preach, how to preach the gospel. Uh, followers of Paul, like uh, just another one to show you there. Um, he said, follow, be followers of me. So like God in his word is telling us to follow Paul. 
What about the king that was deceased in his foot? Yeah, he's uh, yeah, I brought it up, yeah. So it was his father's. Um this one here, isn't it? Mm, let's see. Yep. In twelve. And Asa in the thirty and ninth year year of his reign was deceased in his feet until his decease was exceeding great yet in his decease he sought not the lord but to the physicians so he made a choice mm -hmm. and asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign and they buried him in his own sepulchres which he had made for himself in the city of david and laid him in a bed which was filled with sweet odors and diverse kinds of spices prepared by the apothecary's art and they made a very great burning of him <clears throat> so just seek the lord man pray yeah, yeah. awesome and Thanks be for merry brothers. too it, it, mm. if you type in medicine um, what does it say? A merry heart worketh like a medicine. Yeah, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, I think it says. Yeah. So, like, um, you know how people say, you know, you kind of got to keep working, otherwise your mind is going to focus on the disease or whatever. Mm. And see, you know, you should keep being merry. And whether that be walk around the block or do something, just be merry. And it because it does good like uh, like a medicine, and the medicine that the doctors will give you, they don't work like a medicine. How what God means with medicine? Mm. Yeah. Oh, is is Mary is Mary like saying happy? Mary is. I don't think it's the same because um, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Mary is, I think, different than happy. Oh yeah, but I could be wrong. Is though. it is it is it said like Mary instead of Mary? Is is this Mary? Um, How do they pronounce that one? It's a small M, yeah. That's right. It's not like M A R R Y S. M E with an E. M E is a Mary. Yeah. It, Mary is like um, it's like almost like grateful, sort of. Not, it's not grateful, but it's like... Um, Is that where they got Merry Christmas from, you think? Well, it's the same word, Merry. Yeah, M-E-R-R-Y. Yeah. yeah. Seems to be like a joyful thing. Like you're up. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like a joyful thing. Yes, I don't want to add words to it, but... Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, but, I mean, joyful is in the scriptures as well. That's why, yeah. Yeah. Like, here's one. Um in the prodigal son, uh, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. So they were probably like rejoicing, you know. That's uh, mm. it's a merry it's rejoicing, fun. yeah. Rejoicing is merry, probably, yeah. That'd be a good word. His son was back, so they were merry, right? It's like maybe like the yeah. opposite of sorrow because there's scripture that says uh, <clears throat> sorrow and uh. Mary, I think, is like in Proverbs, maybe it's like sorrow. I would think it'd be like sort of the opposite of sorrow, but I mean, God doesn't say those exact words that it's opposite of sorrow or anything, but uh, very hard. Yeah, I guess Mary is not in, oh, it is in Proverbs, yeah. Um, it's like, hmm. the merry heart maketh a cheerful confident countenance, maybe it's like cheerful, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So maybe it's like a cheerfulness. It definitely sounds positive. Yeah, like glad tidings. I don't know. Yeah, 
And I guess, like, it is what it is, Mary. It's not, you know. Yeah, it's nothing else, yeah. It is what it is, but it um, seems to me like a cheerful. Joyful. Joyful. Uh, uh, yeah. Thing, kind of. Very hot. Happy. Happy, yeah. To be merry. Mm. But he that is all the merry hearts has a continual feast. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. Mm. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. <clears throat> Yeah, it's about your heart too, right? A lot of the scriptures about a merry heart. Yeah, yeah, about the heart a lot too, yeah. Hearts were merry. Mm. Hearts were merry. Yeah, so it's so a heart, yeah. Hearts merry. I think the key word too is hearts. Yeah, so you said a merry heart, do with good like a medicine. Mm. There you go. Heart do it good like a medicine. So medicine do it you good then. So I think it's, it's like uh, rejoicing that his son is back. You know, it's like the prodigal son, prodigal. Old. Somebody calls him prodigal. Maybe that prodigal was a missing word. Is that in scripture, prodigal? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, well. Never this, check the King James. Maybe I shouldn't say prodigal if it's not there. I thought it was though. Prodigal, prodigal. Yeah, the the parable of the prodigal son, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if the words actually in, in the yeah scripture. yeah. Well, but yeah, I mean, but this this uh, parable though, uh, this parable, yeah, and not this one, but oh, it's like joy. Um, Joy, a certain man had two sons, so these parables appeared before the one with the son, um, prodigal son, I guess. Uh, he was giving parables about um, if a man lost it, one sheep and he found, you know, left the 99, found the one, you know, he rejoiced because he found the sheep that was lost. Uh, talking about joy and like a woman found a piece of uh, lost one of her 10 pieces of silver and she found it, you know, she calls her friend, she rejoiced with me. Um, there's joy in the presence. And then the, the next parable is uh, the son, prodigal son there. Uh, when he came back, you know, let us eat and be merry. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Like that, rejoicing. Yeah. Rejoicing mm -hmm. sounds like that's a good one. Hey brothers, I'm gonna get the day started. I'm gonna take Jerdy home to to my other house. To be glad. Right. Love Glass you guys and thank you for the thank you for the to the word of God study and God bless you guys on your journey and preach that gospel. Amen. God speed, brother Daniel. Amen. Yeah. God's people, brothers. See, Daniel. Take care, brothers. Aloha. God bless. God's people, Daniel. Yeah, I like that one, too. Mary Hart uh, does good like a medicine. That's great. Uh, I don't think, you know, talking about the, the chemicals and stuff they have, you know, for people these days out there. I think it's God's medicine is, is different, I think, than... The man's medicine, as Kunder was saying there earlier. But yeah, Mary Hart, it's a, it's a good good thing. Do with good, like a medicine. Do with good. And Kunder brought up earlier about having brethren pray. It's like the fervent, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Uh, 
the effectual, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Pray one for another that he may be healed. So that's, you know, that's really important. So I'll pray for you. We'll be praying for you, Rick. Awesome. Yeah. This is, this is any second one here. Keep on joining, Rick. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Yeah, good nerd saying all the right, all the good things there. Eh? Yeah. What's that one? Uh, never forsake the gathering of. How's that scripture go? Yeah, in Hebrews it says, um, uh, assembling, I think it is. Assembling. Take, not forsaking the assembling. Uh, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Mm. Amen. See, as the manner of some is, and it is, so many folks, you know, they, they join and then we never see them again. Mm. And, and therefore, filling the, the scripture right there, and don't be one of those, you know. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, I hear, I hear, I hear what you guys are saying. Um, well, just being on this live, it's um, makes a difference. Um, makes just makes a difference on the way I'm thinking about things too, and 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 you know, just uh, how so. Yeah, well, it's encouraging, you know. Um, what's that? Iron sharpens iron, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, yeah, no, it's... And it, the good thing about it, I, I, the thing I love about it the most um, is you guys talk with Scripture, and I, I never got that in the 30-plus years from the churches that I attended. Yep. And I, a lot of it is just they take a snippet and then they make a two-hour sermon out of it. Yeah, we go to the Word of God for sure. He said, yeah, um, match yeah. not let my bread alone, but by every word of God. He said, the word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. Be like God be true, but every man a liar. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, and uh, I was brought up earlier, the Word of God, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, it's, it's, it's our it's our light, it's our lamp, you know, it's the truth. Jesus and Jesus saith unto him, or I was gonna say I am the way, the truth, and the life, but you know, man and I've got two scriptures thinking about at the same time. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh in the Father but by me. But the one I wanted to say was actually uh um uh sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. John seventeen, seventeen. So, like the word of God is is truth, right? So, Amen. Like we're just gonna go there, right? Now all men are liars. Mm. It's also right. So, mm. Amen. Like why not go to right to the truth? But that's what the world does. They'll take like a snippet, or like mm. some, even not even the scriptures, but some man's uh, writings. You know that the false books and things, and they'll just talk about two hours about this, their own words, their own uh, private interpretations, their own. Uh, the scriptures say about um, feigned words, making merchandise of you. So, yeah, I've, I've been through that as well, you know, years ago. Where I, you know, I've seen a lot of yep, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> What's that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you just end up more confused with all this different doctrines yeah, from different yeah. preachers. Yeah. And they're all kind of saying like opposite to the other, like they're all disagreeing with each other, right? But it says, is Christ divided? There should be no divisions among you. So why, you know, why are there all these denominations and, and all these different um, schools of theology and Christian, all this kind of stuff with the world, what the world does, you know, that's not the truth. If, you know, God says, 
it should be one mind saying the same, speaking the same thing. Mm. But in the world, you see, it's all a whole bunch of divisions and denominations and fractions yeah. and opposite or like uh, opposing doctrines and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, we have the, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm. So one of many truths. It's the truth. So they have feigned words. They make merchandise of people out there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But uh, Rick, usually we start studies in like 20 minutes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I don't know what time it, that is for you, but um, are you in the live study group? No. No. You're not? Could you no. post your Gmail in the private chat here on, on StreamYard and then I can add you to the live study group? Okay, just uh, bear with me. I'll do that right now, actually. Private chat. Oh, yeah. I wondered how uh, different your time zones are there with uh, Kunder being um, the far farthest. Uh, I guess that would be east for me, but it could be west from you. Or however, oh, if you're looking at Greenwich or however that works, east and west. But he would, he might be the closest to your time zone, if not, you know, if California is not. Right now, it's 20 to 6. In the morning. So I'm on it's almost months. 10 where I'm at. So that's eight hours. You guys are eight hours, yeah. I'm about like uh, 12 hours exactly almost, or 11 and a half or 12 and a half. Yeah. Well, as, as long as um, I get notification when you're going on, and if, if, it, if it works, I'll, I'll just have to try and make an effort on my end anyway, because the majority of you guys are, are near each other's time zone, so it just makes sense that I just have to... I mean, I need it anyway, so I should just be making the effort to, if that makes sense. It's, I think from, like, on the west coast of the United States, where there's some brothers, and then uh, to Kundert, I think is 12 hours wide yeah. in time zones. And then Australia, I guess, would be another eight east but i'm not sure how many west then if it would be to the west coast of the united states would from australia be maybe be would that only be four hours difference then if you're eight hours different from netherlands mm -hmm. are you only four hours behind i guess i could look it up quickly online this uh, like your time zone but it would be only four hours west of um like california for example or the uh, is that four hours forward or backwards? See, the sun goes this way, east to the west, then it would be earlier than you, so before you. It's six o'clock in the morning, so i not a sharp tool right now. Like if they have a study at 2 p.m., for example, would that be, and then it was 2 p.m. Uh, on the west coast of North America. I'm trying to think of the time zone, what it's called there. Um, Pacific time zone, would that only be four hours difference from you? And if they did a study, you know, 2 p.m. or something over there, would that only be like 10 a.m. or something over there? Like, would it not be such a big difference if, if they did, if the West Coast of North America did a study? Sorry, are you speaking to me, Michael? Oh, I was just thinking out loud, I guess. I was kind of, at, I, maybe I wasn't asking a direct question, but I was trying to determine thinking well if it's if the hours are uh, the difference is only four hours forward or backwards um i could make that time because it's only 10, 10 what what days normally um monday wednesday friday monday wednesday friday oh that's, that's but look what we we can set up a study basically any time it yeah. isn't limited to those times so whenever yeah. you want to do a study, usually there's someone that's available. Okay, right? I understand. Yeah. And more people um, join. So it's not yeah, like, yeah. oh, I, I couldn't make it. That That's, you know, we hear that a lot, but that's just an excuse because you could step up and a ask. You could set up a study yourself or someone could create a link. So yeah. if you're available and you want to do a study, you can do it at that time. Well... Uh, he, what, what time zone are you in there, Rick? Just looking at the different ones online for Australia there. Time zone? Um, 
What's is it Brisbane North time or Central? Uh, let me. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, East Eastern Standard Time. Okay. So oh, sorry, right now there it's um almost it's going to be six o'clock, yeah. Yeah, correct. Yep. Uh, so right now, yeah, um, I think, okay, so 6 a.m. would be, if I take off four and a half where I am, 6 a.m. on the West Coast, it's like going to be, it's going to be 1, 8, 1 p.m. on the West Coast, North America. So I guess you guys are, uh, 6 a.m. would be maybe seven hours or so difference from... Okay. If I'm doing the math right there. But yeah, Kundra said like we can do a study anytime almost. Yeah. Obviously. Okay. So I just uh, messaged via Google, is it? Yeah, chat.google.com. Chat.google.com. Okay. It should also be in your Gmail if you log in. It's like the messaging of Google. Yeah, I, I forwarded my uh, Gmail account. It's in the private messages anyway. So. Well, Are you in now? Are you in the group? Oh, no, I haven't um, um, joined. Hang, hang on. Where, where is that? Where do I go for to do that? Just type in chat.google.com. Okay. And then just log into the right account. And then it should say like an invitation oh, yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. You can accept that. What is this? It's interesting here. He said, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So like these false prophets, false teachers among you, the eminable heresies, many, right? And but then Jesus said, um, why does the... Why does the gate? Why does the road? Can you join for me? Uh, Why is the gate? Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets. So false prophets were, were just showing in the, the other scripture. And it says, um, Why does the gate? Um, yeah, why does the gate? Uh, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there. So the same words are used in those different scriptures about false prophets and uh, many being going in there. Hmm? Done? Man, that'd be a blessing. You know, I'll show up. If it's not on the wedding day, I'm definitely going to be there to enjoy that study. Whatever we day. know that. You'll always join. What is it you do again, Rick? Like your job, profession? Um, I work for a... Well, it's um, it's in logistics anyway regarding food. So I just make sure that the orders go out to the um, to the stores. So they make sure, it's the biggest um, supplier chain here in Australia. Okay, cool. Mm. Awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah, you were working for working from home for a minute there during COVID. You and your wife, right? Yeah, that. Well, yeah, uh, we we do have a um, an ecom uh, business, um, yep. and we run from home. So, um, yeah, now yeah, that's because um, I 
only work part time. But since you know uh, me not being well, I haven't been able to uh, turn up to work or you know fulfill my obligation at work because I can't. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't because yeah, my my job is uh, labor intense. If that makes sense. Yep. So, I'm gonna just pray, pray till till you're healthy, every day. Amen. I was I'm feeling I was feeling not very well at all, like a couple of weeks ago, and Kunder mm. uh, reminded me that you know. Santa, you like ask the brethren pray for you, and I just forgot, I guess, and um, needed that you know correction in scripture. And when I asked, and then I'm praying, it was like almost immediately, and like it was pretty bad. Like I was feeling not well at all, like really bad. And then very, very, very short time, I was feeling really, really well again. Just after the brethren praying for me, it's amazing. God, God's mm. awesome. Yeah, you're not going to be having infirmities and afflictions and sicknesses around Kirk uh, and not not step up and say anything because he's going to call you out. Amen for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I need that thing. I, I, I need people who, who are going to, you know, brothers that are going to call me out whenever I'm wrong. Amen. And that's mm. what we all need, and that's why we need to keep doing the studies. Yeah. And keep joining. Amen. Profitable. profitable. When when is the uh, the next? If you guys have sc scheduled the next study tomorrow. T tomorrow. That's seven hours forward from my time, isn't it? What what time do you do studies Monday there? Oh, okay. uh, actually, then it's today for you. My bad. Is so it it's one, already today. Is it one <laughs> wow. like, we're now doing the Sunday study, but for you, it's already Monday. Oh. Yes. So, uh, so how many hours from now? Because then that, that'll be the same here, wouldn't it? Uh, uh, not the time zone, but the time zone. 24 like hours. Exactly. It'll probably be midnight, right? Yeah, and, 24 hours. And 24 hours. hours. Yeah. It'll be in the morning. Oh, yeah. What, what time do you start hours. studies or on Mondays? Or uh, Peter T or... Patrick, what time does Monday study start? Uh, this time, literally within 1 seven minutes. Yeah, it's seven seven minutes. One p.m. Yeah, seven minutes. One p.m. West Coast. But it's but it's in it's in literally twenty four hours from now. Yeah, I can make that work. And that's the same time for Monday, Wednesday, Friday, is it for those studies? Right. Yeah. So three times a week at at this time, Monday I for you it might be Tuesday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Thursday, that's Saturday right. morning. Yeah. One we did today, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Yep. Okay. At least I know. I can work with that. That's cool. Put it in your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> I got it in mine. For sure. I gotta add it to mine, but I've been I've been on it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it though. I'll be working. In it's, it's hours, a, so yeah, good. well, I mean, just as well, the this live is recorded, so it's going to be pretty hard to forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, broadcast. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, let's go. Well, I'm going to get into some stuff myself. I'm going to roll out, brothers. Godspeed, Richard T. All right. Well, Godspeed, thanks for having me. Godspeed. All right. Godspeed. Did you did you get into the live study group there with the Google? I got into the live study oh, cool. group. Thing. Did you? <laughs> I was just trying to get my wife to do it, only because if I I, I don't want to try and attempt it because I'm on my phone at the moment. I don't want to attempt it while I'm on live because I might disconnect. That makes sense. Yeah. Just the connection. Teamwork. Uh, teamwork. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she just said no. I, <laughs> I did that on mine.
There's a reason, but she'll tell me later. Hang on. Let me try and do this. Rick must have been in the study group some time ago, some years ago. No. He saw him in the study group. Uh, Galatians 6. Galatians 6. 6-2. Let's see. I'll let you one. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in fault, Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest they also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No, if life stuff, right, with sickness, whatever. It's like what we think we're alone. It's oh, like, yeah. So I, I, I'm going to handle this. And in easy times, let's come together. But in the hard times, let me deal with it myself. It's not how it should be. No. It's actually the opposite, right? Yeah. Carry you one another's burdens. All right, Michael. I'm a head, head, head out here too. Okay. Yeah, me too, I guess. Great study once again. Yeah, always is. Keep them coming. Yeah, see you on the next one, hopefully there. Or, yes, uh, sir. Or tomorrow, but uh, whenever the next one is there. Lord willing. Yeah. All right, Michael, Godspeed. Godspeed, good. The gospel. Once again, Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. He came into his own people. They killed Jesus Christ, the man whose death uh, was for the sins of the world. After he died on the cross, they took his body down. They buried him. But God rose him from the dead on the third day. And he was seen by his witnesses alive after he rose from the dead. If you believe that gospel and believe on the name Jesus, you have everlasting life. You have forgiveness of sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in the house. 